Tickets are now available for my live audience with UFC superstar Paddy the Baddy. Tickets are available on schedule for the live event in Liverpool on the 31st of March 2023. There's also an opportunity to meet Paddy, get a photo with him, and you can get to ask him questions. We also have special guests appearing. What a night we have in store. I look forward to seeing you all there. You can now follow me on all my social media platforms to find out who my latest guest will be. And don't forget to click the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you're notified for when my next podcast goes live. I've suffered with mental health myself since, you know, being in the limelight and that, not through, like, you know, any traumatic childhood experiences or nothing like that, because, as I said, I had a great childhood. But, like, you know, since being in the public eye and, you know, social media and X, Y, and Z, my mental health fucking suffers and still does at times, do you know what I mean? But they're all crooks, politicians. They are, they are all out for themselves. And, you know, I had a couple of fucking Evertonians, like, block the road once. Do you know when I was trying to drive home from a match? It took us fucking 30 years just to get the truth about what happened, just to get the real verdict, do you know what I mean? How could anyone in this city stand for that fucking government, you know what I mean? You know, with the fuck the Tories and that. <laughs> Funny enough, it started, it was a fan thing. You know, I didn't come out one day and start going, duh, 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 fuck the Tories. The crowd started doing it and I thought, you know what, I agree with you, so let's have, let's do it. You know, I'll sing it with you, I'll dance with you, do you know what I mean? Being in this hotel room and I was literally lowered, low, probably the lowest I've ever been. And I think my parents were worried about me, me, my fiance was definitely worried about me, do you know what I mean? And I just, like, my management were worried about me, everyone was a bit, like, you knew, you know, there was only a certain people who could tell. But, uh, like, I made the call and it was, I just remember, like, fucking hell, I think most of the phone call was just me bawling. Boom, we're on. <laughs> today's guest, we got Jamie Webster. James. Jamie, boy. Absolute pleasure to be on, brother. Yeah, absolute pleasure to have you on. Flying high in life, like, um, electrician to then traveling the world now, mate, doing what you love best, man. Like, it's phenomenal to see you, mate. It's uh, crazy, lad. It's crazy. Right, like, give a shout out to my boys at the Only Fools Bar, Liverpool, Mark, Ross. Like, phenomenal bar. You've got the Lost Souls on as well. Give these boys yeah, a shout out. Like, escapism. Yeah. Um, it's just nice to, you know, obviously Liverpool is a very small place, you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. you, you know everyone through one way or another, but um, the lads in here are fucking great, aren't they? Do you know what I yeah. mean? And uh, the lads at Lost Souls as well, always making me up, making me look smart, not looking like the little tramp that I really <laughs> am. But, uh, yeah, no, yeah. it's nice to be here, man, in such a nice little place as well. Yeah, it's and you're cool flying place. high, man, and it's good to see you, like a local boy just trying, just trying to be something in life, and that's what it's all about. Like, uh, your first song was... Um, I came across was weekend, weekend, uh, weekend paradise. in paradise. Uh, yeah, that was what three, four, yeah, years twenty nineteen, November. Yeah, yeah. Like, so, a long time ago, man. Like, and I was like, ah, I could resonate with. It. But I always go back to the start with my guest brother. Get yeah, a better understanding about you, where you grew up, and how it all began. Yeah, so like, first and foremost, I'm not gonna bullshit you and sit here and say I grew up with nothing. Do you know what I mean? Me dad fucked off, and my mum this to. My man and dad are still together, do you know what I mean? They work fucking very hard at what they do. So then me, me, my brother and my sister had the opportunities that they didn't have, do you know what I mean? And, you know, I never, I'm not going to sit here and say I went without or anything like that because that would be unkind to me mum and dad and also unkind to the people who actually have gone without and there's plenty of them around here and up and down this aisle and in, around the world, do you know what I mean? But no, I lived quite a happy childhood, do you know what I mean? Loved footy, loved music was able to play in footy teams, was able to get guitar less. Actually didn't want to learn guitar. My mum wanted me to learn guitar. And I wanted to be in the street playing footy with the lads. And mm. she said, you'll thank me one day, lads. Do you know when I was going to the guitar practice and shit? And obviously that day's come and it's full circle. But no, pretty standard childhood really, do you know what I mean? Out, out with me mates playing footy, do you know, out hanging around with girls at the age of 13, 14, drinking on the streets, do you know what I mean? Doing stuff I shouldn't have been doing at a young age and, you know, but mixing with people that, you know, weren't always from my background as well, that was a big thing for me, do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And, you know, knocking around with mates who where I say I didn't go without some of my mates did, do you know what I mean? And it was always, I always felt aware of it, you know what I mean? And it was always, every time I, you know, once I started, once my mates told me I was half decent at singing and playing guitar, which was probably 
all the confidence they needed really because obviously you know being from Glasgow and being from Liverpool it's probably a pretty similar mm -hmm. you know what I mean um, pond in the sense that you know if you're fucking shite your mates will tell you <laughs> that you're fucking shite you know what I mean yeah. and it'd be like nah I'd call that a day do you know what I mean that's not for you but you know thankfully they were like fucking hell lad you're alright do you know what I mean so I started playing covers and blah 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 and just but thankfully I had my eyes open to what was going on around me and I, you know I had my eyes open to you know, situations that my mates might have been in through no fault of their own and situations that their family might have been in through no fault of their own. And I always questioned it, you know what I mean? I was always like, well, why and how has it got to that? And, you know, it was probably when I started going to the Liverpool match that, like, you know, my dad always said to me, my mum wanted me to play guitar. My mum was definitely the musical influence, but the football was my dad. My dad's a mad Liverpool fan, you know, whenever he could, which wasn't always, by the way, do you know what I mean? When I was little, like three, four times a season, whenever he could afford to and whenever he could get tickets, we'd go to the games, you know what I mean? And it was I was always enthralled by it, infatuated by it. And he said, the best years of my life, lad, were when I followed Liverpool around with my mates and stuff. And you meet fucking great people from different places. And do you know what I mean? You really grow up and you really like appreciate, you know, you really get an understanding for how the world works, traveling up and down the country. And I did, do you know what I mean? It was like, fucking hell, you, you know, 16 on the bus with a load of, some of the lads are doctors, some of the lads are selling fucking swag. Do you know what I mean? Selling all sorts of shit, you know what I mean? Some of the lads are doing really well for themselves nowadays. Some of them lads are in prison now, do you know what I mean? But I was just, as you can tell already from the start of this podcast, I'm a chatty fucker. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So I made mates dead quick with loads of different people and that was where I sort of gained my grasp for the mindset I have now and my politics that I have now. It was learning from people older than me and looking at people younger than me and looking at people around me and seeing how our lives were different and finding out why. And yeah, it was, I always go back to just because I don't have that, I'm all right, Jack attitude, do you know what I mean? Just because things were all right for me as a young lad doesn't mean that like, I shouldn't be, you know, using my platform that I've got now to change things for people who aren't all right, you know what I mean? Just yeah. because I'm all right doesn't mean that I can't see wrong in society or wrong in the way things are run or wrong in the way people have to live their fucking lives, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, but I think that's the best thing is to stay true to you no matter how big you get. Sometimes people can forget themselves. Sometimes I have to question it. Don't ever forget your ass where you've came from to what you're doing now, but you've still got to give yourself a pat on the shoulder and say, you know what, I'm doing okay, but it's using that platform to then not changing your beliefs because you can get to a certain level where you can be manipulated and guided for maybe that extra bit of money or try and get extra like, for, at the forefront, what team you support and what religious parties you support, whatever that is, like, yeah. that can then damage oh, fans. Fucking right, that, yeah. Again, it's fuck it, it's staying to what you know and you've built your following through being who you are. Like, Glasgow, Liverpool similarities, I always say this, I love the Scousers, I've got so many friends down here, like they're, they're solid, they didn't fuck you over man, they're 100%, like, if they like you, they like you, like you say, they ain't got, they're going to tell you straight, but it's there's so much wasted talent, you can go down the road and then get caught up in the bad shit, like, why have you managed to stay on a path where you were doing covers for years, singing other people's songs to then stay on a path and then seeing a vision, did you see a vision at a young age? Yeah, well it was just like, you know, the, there's, there's plenty of people who, I suppose, were told, no, well, not told, you know, like, they were in a clique of mates and they thought, oh, I can't fucking be doing that, you know what I mean? The lads will laugh at me without even trying it or whatever. And I've seen people get laughed at, you know what I mean, for wanting to do things and it's what North End kids about. But for me, with, I always just, I, I loved it, you know what I mean? I felt myself, you know, like I could have knocked around with the lads all my life and you know what I mean? I could pretend to be a scally lads, I could do whatever, do you know what I mean? I could mix it with, you know, I could fit in with, with the rest of them, you know what I mean? I could talk to anyone. But uh, I always felt myself and, and and the most happiest when I had the guitar in my hands playing on on the stages, you know, whether it was in a, in a bar like this, you know, there's lads who playing here doing covers, this is where I sort of earned my rep, earned my name. But like, I always had... I always felt like I have something to say, you know what I mean? And I still do, do you know what I mean? I, I've always, you know, if someone sparks a conversation with me, I'll fucking hold the conversation with them and I'll talk about it. And I like to get an insight from other people think. But for me with the music, I was always just writing songs of like, I don't know, I'd, something had happened and I'd, 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 you know, I'd see like the results of, you know, politics, I don't say politics, politics, like, you know, you'd see, for example, I had pals who, who'd been bad lads in the past, do you know what I mean? And he'd been to jail and whatever. And 
no matter how much they tried to, to stay on the straight and narrow for because of the past, it'd be like, oh no, you're you're like that. You, you know, you've got this this past. You can't do this. You no can't chances. work in this. You can't work in that. Even you know, like in terms of like you know, if you were pulled over in the car, you know, you know, to the police. Do you know what I mean? No, I'm not known to the police. All right, son, will you come and stand over there? You know, are you known to the police? No, I'm not known. All right, son, you stand over there. Are you known to the police? Yeah, I'm known for, um, you know, whatever, fucking Grand Theft Auto, when I was fucking 15, and it's like, right, get out the car, fucking against the wall, and all of a sudden it's, you know, and that sort of thing. So I'd, I'd, and I'd see, like, these people fucking really deflate it. I'm not trying to act like it, you know what I mean? But you'd see them really fucking... Like, fucking hell, I'm a marked man now for the rest of my life. And these lads are fucking 17, 18 years of age. They already felt defeated. Do you know what I mean? And it was like that. Well, I was like, well, I can't change it. I can't fucking give this busy a mouth full ear and say, why am I being treated differently to him? Or, you know what I mean? But, you know, mm-hmm. we, we all make mistakes. Because so they're not going to listen. It's not going to get through. But if I write a song about, do you know what I mean? The, the injustices in, in the world. Or if I write a song, you know, if I'm seeing people you know, fucking people's mental health spiraling because of things that they're seeing on social media. Then I'll write a song about social media not being a real fucking thing, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's just an entity of someone's imagination, really. Do you know what I mean? It's what they want you to see. And I, I don't know, every song that I've always written, it's always had a meaning. I've never been the type of person to write a song about a fucking champagne lifestyle that I don't live, for example, do you know what I mean? And... That was the vision I always had, just like them songs that I was writing in my bedroom at 14, 15, 16. I had dreams and like visions of them songs being screamed back to me by tens of thousands of people, by thousands of people, by hundreds of people. I don't know what it was, I've just always had a feeling. And this isn't me saying I knew I was going to make it, because fucking it took a lot of hard work to do it, you know what I mean? You know, I've been, I'm 28 years of age now and I'm just, I'm still not there, do you know what I mean? I've still got a big, 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 big ladder to climb. But the vision that I had was always of, the connection with the people that I stand for and the people that I represent and the people that I knock about with, do you know what I mean? And it was, that was always the vision of just them songs about, you know, the catchphrases of like, ears to the people of common civilization, for example. And like, I had visions of people, you know, passionately singing them back to me and they've come to fruition now, obviously, because I've, I've seen it in festivals, I've seen it in gigs, I've seen it in arenas, it's been great, but it's always been, I don't know, I just, I just always had that personality that's just never ever give up on on anything, do you know what I mean? And I've always I've always worked at things, do you know what I mean? And I always remember my half fella saying to me, like, you know, when you were younger, look, lad, you know, because my mum and dad's like politics are probably the same as me. My dad's not political in any certain way. So where do you get yours from? Me my own my own views, my own views and what I've seen and my own mind that I've made up, which is what everyone should, because do you know, like no not saying no me not saying my mum and dad are Tories, because they're certainly not, they've never voted Tory in their lives, do you know what I mean? But my dad doesn't vote, he's never voted, do you know what I mean? And I think my mum votes less and less as the years go by, do you know what I mean? And they're from a different generation and my dad's quite rightly always said to me, do you know, look, you get out of life what you put in, son. No one's going to fucking give you anything. And he's right. Do you know what I mean? And my mum says the exact same thing, to be honest. You know, they're all they're all crooks, politicians. They are, they are all out for themselves. And again, I don't think they're wrong. Do you know what I mean? Like, you know, there's stories, you know, obviously, like, I, my detox or the, the, the slogan catch line my gigs is fuck the Tories but you know I'm not sitting here saying that every Labour politician is a fucking saint you know what I mean and they've never done wrong in the past of course they have and if they still are do you know what I mean you know, I'm not saying Keir Starmer's the answer by any fucking chance but like me mum and dad have always instilled the worth ethic in, worth ethic into, work ethic sorry lad into me that said like you know look you can do as well for yourself, but you've got to work for it. You know what I mean? You can be anything you want to be. You can go and do whatever you want to do. We'll always support you. But, you know, at the end of the day, it comes down to you and how much you're willing to graft and how much you believe in yourself and what you're doing to, to do what you're doing. I have done that, you know what I mean? Because I've, I've been... You know, when I was an electrician, lad, I used to... I remember Friday nights used to be like, everyone would look forward to Friday night, you know what I mean? All the lads would be like, lad, we're out here, do you know what I mean? And I'd be like, fuck for a gig tonight, you know what I mean? But it'd be, I'd drive home from work, get home from work at six o'clock, 
He's to have all my lads and all my tools in the back of this little shitty Peugeot, this little blue Peugeot 207. And he used to like, cover the full in fucking dust, Chris Packard's bottles, fucking, you know, tools, light bulbs, everything was all over. And I'd get me ladders. I used to have my ladders over me passenger seat, you know what I mean? Because they couldn't fit in the car properly. I didn't have a roof. I used to get me ladders out the car, all my drills, all my tools, throw them in the garage. Then I'd run upstairs, get me PA, get me two big speakers, like the bigger than the ones over there, I suppose. Get them and get me mixing in, get me guitars in, get up my bag of cables in. And then I'd run up, run in, have a quick bite to eat, get in the shower, get in the car, bomb it to town. I had to get all my gear set up before all the punters would get in. Sound check, yeah, that sounds all right. Then you do fucking three hours in the slaughterhouse, you know what I mean? Bashing them out till half one in the morning. All your mates would be there, all pissed, all on the shite, all having a great fucking Friday night. The Friday night that I wanted to have, do you know what I mean? And then I'd, I'd be like, right, one o'clock, bump. Finished. I have all people fucking, yeah, all right, let's play as one more lad, fucking this, that, the other, you know, you're entertaining them. Eventually get your shit to your car, get home for what, two o'clock in the morning, then I'll be up Saturday morning doing a foreigner, do you know what I mean? Tools back in the car going to one of my mates' houses or one of my dad's mates' houses to wire that for them, you know what I mean? And Saturday night again, back in, do you know what I mean? If, I got, if, I'd, if I'd have an away game that weekend, that'd be my day off where I'd go out with the lads on the bus. But then if it was a home game, it was fucking two, three gigs on a home game, you know what I mean? Doing the Liverpool songs and shit. So I, I fucking, I reckon I went months at a time where I'd work every day, sometimes fucking two jobs, do you know what I mean? And like, I knew that, like, you know, A, it was money in the pocket because the, the you know, the wage that you're in as an electrician and the lifestyle that I wanted to live, fucking mm -hmm. following Liverpool up and down the country and other countries, I was having to do more than me sparking to pay for that, you know what I mean? And, uh, Thankfully, like where I had mates who who were getting on the graft, do you know what I mean? There was like older lads in our area. I'm from the West Derby Crocky area. Older lads in our area, do you know what I mean? That we'd known through the years, like clocking that I had a car, clocking at my mates to have a car. Hey, lad, do you want to do a bit of graft on a Friday night? You know what I mean? Go and shift a load of this and we'll give you this. And I was luckily enough, I need to, oh, I'll give you a hundred quid for the night, you know what I mean? And thankfully, I'd be like, well, no, man, I'm not cashing and fucking doing a couple of. Yeah three hours singing I don't need that lads do you know what I mean and it was I was lucky that I, I didn't have to you know I had mates who were like fuck yeah I need that hundred quid yeah, yeah I'll do it lad do you know what I mean and you know they've obviously some of them have been lucky enough to not be in any yeah. real trouble from it but others yeah, but haven't it, you know what I mean it can suck you in that life especially at a young age and exactly it's paid off you know all those fucking hours and days and weeks and months and years on end to be travelling to try and make something in your life but if you're struggling it's easy to get caught up in the bad stuff and it's not that they're bad people it's just it's not you think it's normal what was your first ever gig my first ever gig that I played yeah oh that I played it was in the um, the cabin club you're shaking yourself yeah, but proper yeah. shame. Oh, lad. So, hey, this is the mic. I uh -huh. sang looking at the mic like yeah. that. You know, just like gauzy eyed look. Mm -hmm. and, and the room was full of me, mates and family. There was only about 50 people in there, you know what I mean? And I knew them all. But I think that made it worse. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Because you were like, fuck. And like, it was proper. We were in a band and we were shite our first band. Like, we were terrible. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? We were like, three of us were like best mates who grew up together. And we started playing the guitar here, whole thing. I obviously still play guitar, and the lad was on the, the the drum thing on the Xbox, and he was like, "I might get a drum set." And he learned, and the bass player sort of you know, fucking kill me for saying he sort of learned. Good old Billy, he sort of learned his bass a little bit enough enough to to get around, like you know what I mean. And mm -hmm. we got like a rehearsal room in town, which we just fucking you know what I mean. We were just doing shit we shouldn't have been doing. We weren't playing music half the time, you know what I mean. You know what I mean? Having a bit of pot, you know, having a bevy, you know what I mean? Having parties in there and that, you know what I mean? Yeah. Fucking building, getting raided by the busies, running up and down in the fucking lifts, trying to hide from them, stashing all bits in crisp packets and shit like that, you know what I mean? It was, it was funny. It was a fucking mad time, but we weren't fucking practicing our craft, do you know what I mean? I used to get dead angry because I'd be like, right, turn up for practice and then they want to turn up late and pissed or whatever and just fucking, I was trying to get those gigs and then, oh no, I can't do that gig. I'm I'm going out to a party or I can't, you know what I mean? I was like, does anyone fucking want this? And, do you know, we were called Stare at the Stereo first and we were fucking bad la. And then we, we went, we got, we got rid of one guitarist. I think he left and then we got a better one in and I stopped playing guitar and I was just singing and these two lads were fucking great players. Still are, still play now, you know what I mean? But like, I was into like Oasis, the Be not, not even the Beatles so much back then. It was more Oasis, the Roses. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Fucking Primal Scream, shit like that. You know what I mean? And fucking 
club music as well. Do you know what I mean? Bad dance. Yeah, yeah, a bit of dance going up, going out, and do you know what I mean? Going to match on the buses, just fucking party buses all the way home, especially if you'd have a big win in London or something like that. And uh, which was very rare back then, actually, because Liverpool was shy back then as well. Um, but you know. We were shite, and then we we started this week. We were called the Nova Lads. I think we played like two gigs, and on the second gig, it was only down the road in the ship and forecast downstairs, and we were supporting this band from Wales, and like they were on tour. I'd never heard of them, still haven't. Fucking don't know if they ever went on to do anything at all, and uh, they were on tour, and basically the deal was it used to be the deal back then you'd get a pound for every ticket you sell if you sold over 50 tickets and we never used to fucking get anywhere near 25 like you know what I mean so you just you'd never get any dough for any of the gigs or not and it's just practice and you're just trying to fucking you're playing on a stage all mic'd up with all fucking production so it was a learning curve do you know what I mean but fuck me we were terrible in this one gig remember the room it was quite similar to this probably where where then boards stop, you know, before it dips down to the, mm. the, that's the size of the room, like, and it's very much like this low ceiling pillars in the middle. And we're on the stage here, yeah, and no, like, they, the Welsh band, they were headline, and they'd sold 12 tickets, right? And they went on till like half nine, and we were on at like seven o'clock, half seven, and we didn't shift one, none, you know, none of our mates. It was a Thursday night, no one wanted to, it was about eight quid a ticket as well. And the bass player's mum turned up three quarters of the way through the gig and was the only person in the fucking room and I come off stage and it was sort of a realisation that like fucking hell even me mates aren't coming down to support me now you know what I mean yeah. call this a day so we, we all I think a lot of a couple of the lads like the idea of being in a band more than they did actually you know the, yeah producing good music yeah yeah and just like even you're not gonna produce good music when you're 16 because you're still learning what music is but you've got to work at it you know what I mean there's bands in the city now we were fucking do you know the, the, the great music, great little musicians, and they work hard together. And the, but the, the music they're putting out now might not be great, but you know, in five years' time, when they're all, when they know who they are, what music they like, what sound that they want to do, yeah. and how to do it, I'm telling you, by the time they're 21, 22, it'll be good music. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, do you think people can get to that far though, especially when they're playing in front of 50 people, 25 well, people? Was there any times you ever thought, fucking going, well, that's I did. too much? I did. I stopped and started playing covers. Do you know what I mean? Because I was like, mm. fucking. I mean, no money from this. I'm not enjoying it anymore. Even the music's not even a reflection of what I want to write because everyone else is playing the instruments and I'm just singing. And do you know what I mean? Because I wasn't still not that good on the guitar. I just know how to fucking make it work for me. Do you know what I mean? I'm rough and ready, lads. But it was a case of like, fuck, like this, 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 this thing here, this band entity, it's not going anywhere. And do you know, I've always felt more comfortable with an acoustic guitar in my hands. Do you know what I mean? And like, mm writing songs that people could hear the words in. Do you know what I mean? And like, I, that was me, me words. That's what I was. And like, the sound was so loud. People couldn't even hear what I was singing. And it was just fucking hell. You could probably find some videos of us and it's fucking dreadful. Do you know what I mean? But like you mentioned with Jerry Cinnamon, you know what I mean? He was in a band called The Cinnamons, wasn't he? Mm. And I think it was pretty much the same script. You know, yeah. I've seen some videos of them. And I thought, wow, doesn't he? You can't even believe it's the same fella. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? And, uh, do you know, yeah, I was a big, big fan of Jerry's actually for a long time until I, until I heard he doesn't like me. But why? I was playing in a boozer on County Road, like a rough ass boozer in front, you know, after a match of 200 people there. And he was playing the hydro that night and the Coral was supporting him. And my man, one of my two managers, his brothers are in the Coral. And he was working for the Coral, doing a bit of, you know, stage, you know, like sorting the guitars out for them and that. And Jerry come over to him and... Uh, I'm not asked about it now, do you know what I mean? Because I've, it's, you know, it's one of them things. He never spoke to me about it, and I still think he's fucking what he done was brilliant, you know what I mean? I'm not, you know, if he wanted to come and have a chat with me man to man, I'll have a chat with the man to man. But, I mean, personally, like, I went all around the world to see this come play. Like, I went to fucking Amsterdam, I went to Edinburgh, I went to Glasgow, I went to Manchester, I went to fucking London, I went to Birmingham, seen him three times in the pool, seen him in Liverpool before, like, you know, before the album even properly took off and there was still tickets left on the day, you know, the O2 Academy and that. And I was, I fucking, like, he really did. It was, because I come away from him playing in the band, went and started playing covers, Started playing covers at the Boss Nights, which turned into Liverpool songs. Went on a fucking mad journey with the club. Do you know what I mean? Which was like me Hamburg years almost, because I was controlling rang bunches football crowds who were just fucking steaming. Do you know what I mean? In in Glaswegian terms, which mm -hmm. Scousers think steaming means horny, but fucking in Glasgow, steaming means you're pissed. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But uh, like them sorts of crowds, you know the type. Do you know what I mean? Just fucking 
literally steaming out of their ears, do you know what I mean? Mm. Uh, people falling through windows and I was, you know, conducting these crowds and I was fucking holding them and telling them to shut up when he needed to shut up and learn loads of boss stuff, stuff from me. And it was when I went to see Jerry doing this thing with an acoustic guitar and I fucking, and I was like, that's fucking brilliant, that. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Like, what a great, you know, great sound and that. And the songs just spoke to me because, they, you know, they, they, that first album's fucking amazing, man. It's like, it's escapism, it's this, do you know what I mean? Yeah. And it really spoke to me and it really touched me and I thought, fucking hell, man, this kid is like fucking, didn't know he was fucking nearly 40 or whatever, do you know what I mean? But at the time I was like, this lad is fucking, he's just, he's come out of nowhere. He's changed the music game for people like me because fucking, he's, he's everywhere. Look at what he's doing, look at this journey he's been on. I felt real part of it because I was with him from, since Hope Over Fear in 2015, when he released that, you know, about the independence and that. Mm. Tell the Westminster Tory, Scotland is no longer your slave. I thought, fucking, I haven't heard a line like that in my life since Bob Dylan was writing music, do you know what I mean? Like, this is fucking incredible. So, went to see him and all that was buzzing, you know, obviously. And he used to say at the end of all his gigs, see if you're a young musician kicking about in the industry, don't listen to anyone, just do what's in here. Look at what I'm doing, do it like me. Fucking go and be yourself, man. Go and do this stuff. Fucking all I need is this guitar and you people. You can do it. You can do it. You fucking go on. I'd stand there every gig and I'd take a bit more confidence and a bit more belief from each one. And I'd be like, fucking yes, lad. It's right, Jerry, I will. You know what, lad, I will. And I'll see you one day, lad. Fucking is right, brother. So fucking release this weekend in paradise. And then me, me older manager phones me, not the one he was kicked off on phones me. It's come out the same day, dark days and... In the iTunes chat, pissed dark days out the water, do you know what I mean? And I don't know whether it was a bit of that or a bit of whatever, do you know what I mean? And he, my manager phoned me and said, oh, have you heard from Jerry? And I was buzzing, I went, oh, what? Thinking, because he was giving loads of young acts support slots mm -hmm. and, you know, the Latums who were on my management and stuff, they got a support slot off him. So I was like, has he given me a support slot? He went, no, no, he's at the fucking roof. <laughs> I went, why? What did you mean he's at the roof? And he went, oh, you need to speak to Alfie, like, he's fucking, he's, he's proper fucking, give Alfie an earful. So, like, phone, you know, Alfie so goes up to Alfie and says, are you the guy who's managing Jamie Webster? And he goes, yeah, yeah, how are you, mate? Goes, You're a fucking shameless cunt, you know that? Calls Alfie a shameless cunt, says that we cunt's trying to rip him off. Do you know what I mean? I'm just fucking taking influence from someone who, who inspired me, do you know what I mean? I was giving him a nod, do you know what I mean? Because if you listen to the rest of my music, it's not unlike Weekend to Paradise. And that album was already writ, do you know what I mean? It was just like, this was my big single that was going to fucking take off. And it did, do you know what I mean? It's still a big single and it's just like, fucking hell, man. I've got just fucking plenty of musicians now in the city, in Liverpool, do you know, writing songs about politics mm -hmm. and blah, blah, blah. Because you think if I sat there and turned my nose up at them all, do you know what I mean? Like, that's not who I am. That's not the message I'm putting across. The message I'm putting across is we all fucking look after each other. Do you know what I mean? And you look after yourselves and each other because the fucking powers that be aren't going to look after you. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? And even in the industry, no one, the big wigs in the industry aren't going to look after you. So you've got to, got to all stick together, man, and fucking, you know, speak from the same in sheets and shit like that. And lad, he just... He just proper, you know, it was a proper kick in the balls, lads. And, you know, I've, I've, you know, I haven't, this is the first podcast I've properly come out and said exactly what happened on it, you know what I mean? Just with you mentioning that you're a mate from him, because it might actually get back to him one day, do you know what I mean? That, like, look, I'm still not calling him a cunt, you know what I mean? I mean, I think he acted pretty cunty, like, you know what I mean, on the day and, you know, whatever. But he still hasn't spoke to me in my face or he hasn't made, you know, he hasn't made no God approach to, to, to it. Because, like, if he'd have said to me, what's all this about, man? I would have turned around and said, look, lad, I got that from you. You told me that. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Here, there, I've been here. And I think if he maybe realised just how much I was into him, he would have fucking... He would have... He maybe he wouldn't have reacted the way he did. But what was funny and what was quite rich as well is I used to cover all of the show. Like, I'd go and play the slaughterhouse, right? And no one in this fucking city knew who he was, right? And I'd go and play Campfire Vampire in the slaughterhouse, right? And my mates would send a fucking video to him back when he was fucking had 2,000 followers or whatever and say, here's this kid in Liverpool singing your songs here, lad. And he replied to one of them saying, what a fucking set of pipes he's got. This was well before. Do you know what I mean? Like, oh, it's all right when you're covering him. Do you know what I mean? And then... There was a video of me playing Belter at Boss Night. It's probably still on Boss Night's YouTube now. Do you know what I mean? Fucking everyone used to say to me after I played them, you know them two songs that you played there, that one about Belter and who's that by? And I'd sit there and go, look, listen to Jerry Cinnamon. I used to say it everywhere, go and listen to him. I used to say to me, mates, have you heard Jerry Cinnamon yet? Nah, nah, we'll fucking put that down, what you're listening to, and fucking listen to this, because it's, it's going to change you. Do you know what I mean? It's fucking, it's coming in in a big way. I used to 
preach it since 2015. Used to tell everyone to get on him. And I, I genuinely believe that like a big, not obviously he's, he's got his own success all over the country. So I'm not saying I'm part of it, but I genuinely think that in the early days, a lot of my amplification of his music was getting people to listen to him because I, I could probably name a hundred people, just me, who've come up and said, fucking hell, I listen to that lad. He's great, isn't he? Do you know, over the years. It was the most inspiring story in music that, I, that, that I'd, I'd looked at, you know, in a long, long time. It really, really gave me a fucking fire to go and do this, what I'm doing now. So I do at home a lot of thanks, do you know what I mean? But like, I would like to see him and say, what the fuck is your head at, lad? Do you know what I mean? Because like, you know, I know mates of his now from Glasgow, people who fucking grew up in the same area as him. Do you know what I mean? Mates of mine who told me, oh yeah, he used to fucking queue jump and fucking give, give, he let us into the gigs and all this, that, the other. And I know he used to be a fucking sound cunt and fucking, I don't see him as much anymore, blah, blah, blah. So if I'm mixing with them people and them people are mine, you know what I mean? We're not too far away from each other, as you know what I mean? And I was just proper disheartened by it and just, yeah, you know, I'd love to see him one day. Do you know what I mean? And to be fair, I, I was a little bit, little bit cheeky because the dude, there's a documentary getting done on me at the moment. And, uh, you know, we've had all sorts of people speaking on it, like fucking great musicians from, from around and past. And, you know, even like, you've got fucking Pete Doherty on it. We've got fucking all sorts on it. And I, I said to the lads who was directing and producing, I said, Ask Jerry if he'll say a few words about it, like, you know what I mean? Didn't get a reply, but, um, yeah, I'd still love to have that chat with Jerry and see what just what it was that fucking pissed him off, do you know what I mean? Because as far as I'm concerned, I'm doing my thing, telling my story and trying to make my way, and he's, he's doing it, you know what I mean? He's yeah. doing his thing, and fucking hell, mate, there's more than enough cake to go around. That's the socialism I believe in, you know what I mean? And that industry, but you don't know who's saying what. That's yeah, the maybe fucking he's got hot. someone behind his head, you know, someone working his head behind the scenes, I don't know, it's do you know what I mean? seeds and yeah. people making up shit and... I get it, do you know what I mean? But all you've got to do is speak to someone, innit? You know what I mean? Like if, you had, like, if I had a problem with someone, if there was a young musician who, who had felt had ripped me off in any way, or if there's a band who I think had fucking tried to take the piss out of me or, you know, do something that I think was a bit... You fucking ask any of them. I'll just pick up my phone, say, hey, lad, what's happening? What's all that about, mate? Do you know what I mean? And we'll talk about it like fucking adults, do you know what I mean? I'll go fucking screaming at people's managers and blocking them on Twitter, standing on a stage in a fucking hydro full of 13,000, you know, empty room, 13,000 people are about to come in and sing to you. And he shouted that I nicked his fucking upstroke, do you know what I mean? On the stage, like, you know what I mean? Jumped off stage, huffing and puffing. And it's just fucking childish behaviour to me, that, you know what I mean? And like, like I say, he, he might tell me something that I've done that I don't know about, do you know what I mean? And if it did, you know, and it was fucking snide, I'd be the first to say, yeah, man. I agree with you there, that was snag, but I fucking tell you I haven't, because all I've done up to that point is go and watch him fucking play gigs, and you know what I mean, buy fucking albums and shit like that, and support them, and, and preach to the choir about how fucking good he was, do you know what I mean? So, it was a bit of a disheartening thing, but it, you know what, it, it sort of shaped me for the industry to, again, like, I had people telling me back then, do you know what I mean, when I was a nobody, you know, and he was fucking riding the fucking the wave very highly, you know, fucking we'll use this, you, you know, PR people saying to me, come out and let's talk about it, you know what I mean? I used to say, nah, because it's, you know, I don't want it to be about me and him. I'm doing my things, you know what I mean? I don't want it to be, I don't want to use his platform to gain momentum, do you know what I mean? I don't, and likewise, I don't want to lose face in Glasgow, do you know what I mean? Like fucking... Glasgow's my second city, do you know what it always has been? And the last thing I wanted to do was fucking piss off people who, you know, he's like the fucking son of Glasgow, you know what I mean? The favourite son of Glasgow at the moment. And again, I'm still a big fucking fan. I still think his music's great. I still think his gigs are fucking insane. Do you know what I mean? I would just love to know where he come to the conclusion that he did about me, do you know what I mean? Because if he'd have spoke to a couple of people and done a bit of digging, he probably would have found out that I'm a nice enough lad, do you know what I mean? And uh, I don't know, I'm a real genuine person, do you know what I mean? And... I don't know. It's it's a bit mad. It's still a bit mad. I don't yeah. understand. I don't, I still don't understand it. And like, you know, I haven't actually come across him. But hopefully one day, man, you can resolve it though. And I'd, fight, look, and I'd just I'd, I'd literally ask him if he wanted a cup of tea and a chat about. It. I wouldn't fucking stand there and he's smashing it, man. He done yeah. it sold at Hamden yeah. for his fifty thousand. I could stand there. I'd probably make a joke in the past and say, oh, "I'll fucking fight him," but I'm not a fucking fighter, lad. I'm as bad as hard as a wet fart, lad. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like I genuinely <laughs> said, I might take the piss and act like a bit of a hard knock now and again, but. So it's just a bit of a laugh, do you know what I mean? I'd sit there with them and say, lad, come on, sit down, what's your problem, bro? Talk to me, lad. Mm -hmm. Give us a little cuddle, do you know what I mean? That's how I'd resolve yeah. it, do you know what I mean? But somehow I don't think he'd see it the same way. But maybe one day, Jerry, do you know what I mean? Uh, we, can, we, can, we can talk, but 
yeah, it was a mad one. But you know, coming from through that, it was like I knew. And obviously, people saying, "Oh, you like Jerry Cinnamon?" You're like, "Why well, don't you and Jerry do a gig together? It'd be great." And I just, I just say to them, "Ask him." Do you know what I mean? Like, cause I'd, I'd still do it tomorrow in a heartbeat. You know what I mean? I still think that me and him doing on the same bill would be a fucking electric gig. Do you know what I mean? And you know, he's obviously, but the things he's done through having no label, no fucking no pluggers no nothing do you know what I mean? it's fucking incredible he's a freak he's a freak in nature doing that and I mean that in the most respectful way possible do you know what I mean he's an absolute anomaly to, to the rule do you know what I mean like I'm not on a major label don't get me wrong and I couldn't be on a late major label because then people don't work how I you know I don't want anyone telling me how to how to make music or you know how to be me do you know what I mean which majors would do I'm on an independent label that's based in the city where the team are based around me, do you know what I mean? I've worked with this team throughout my career now and we understand each other and they are there to just amplify what I speak for, do you know what I mean? I've got a great understanding and, you know, thank, I don't have fucking millions of pounds to throw at albums or album campaigns or even hundreds of thousands of pounds, do you know what I mean? Do you think that's a hindrance as well when you speak out, like, fuck the Tories and that, do you think that can not fast track your career as fast as people who would yeah, go through defo, the hoops? Yeah, definitely, but, you know, like, and, and it probably has already and, and, and certainly the football stuff at the start definitely did, do you know what I mean? Because but if your music's that good, then people are going to buy it. In my opinion, that like, Everton, whatever, if you resonate with people, then genuine people go, do you know what, I like that. It's it's you can understand it as well, but if somebody was decent man you supporter and had good music, you'd probably think, I'm not buying that country. Yeah, at first, yeah, I've yeah. said that myself, do you know what I mean? Like, you know, if, if Everton had a singer like me, he was singing all fucking songs about Liverpool and, you know, fucking taking a piss out of us. And, you know, every time fucking Everton won the trophy, if that was the case, do you know what I mean? I seen this lad with a fucking guitar in front of thousands of fucking <laughs> men. I'd probably hate his guts as well, do you know what I mean? But then... The minute he starts, he moves away from that and he starts doing writing songs that were fucking resonating with me and my life. Look, all I used to do when I'd write music is look at my own life, look at the mistakes I'd made and then look at me mates and the people around me and look at what they were doing and look at the fucking, do you know what I mean? What mindset they were in and what world they were in and sort of trying to tie it all together so it made sense to anyone. Do you know what I mean? And that's still what I do. Do you know what I mean? I still look at real things that really happen and try and tell it in a, in, you know, in a way that, you know, that tells a story that people can, you know, escape do you know what I mean and also like fucking you know be inspired from it and stuff like that you know what I mean and just connect and resonate with it and that's how I've always done it but you know with the fuck the Tories and that funny enough it started it was a fan thing you know I didn't come out one day and start going duh, 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 fuck the Tories the crowd started doing it and I thought you know what I agree with you so let's have, let's do it you know and I'll sing it with you I'll dance with you do you know what I mean it's a fucking with my gigs what's What's different about other gigs and what's quite similar to Jerry's gigs is that they're very tribal. Do you know what I mean? It feels like you're a part of a fucking tribe. You feel like you're part of something when you're there. It goes beyond the music. It goes beyond the sense. Of, it goes to like a sense of togetherness and I'm not fucking alone here in this mad fucking world. Do you know what I mean? And yeah. Do you know what I mean? These are the moments that we fucking live for sort of thing. And I just, I make sure I display just as much passion as anyone in the crowd. Like, I always say to any young musician going onto a stage, you need to make sure that that crowd know that you want to be there just as fucking much as, as they do. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? And that's what I always, and that's the yeah. gigs at Alexis. Because up in Scotland, the same as like, the Tories and that as well, especially well, in Glasgow, that like, like Maggie Thatcher in the 80s, like, she fucking ripped the ass out of, of Scotland and destroyed it. And people don't forget that, especially my parents, grandparents and stuff. It's not that religion, like, uh, Politics, I can really give a fuck for it. If I'm honest, it doesn't change my career who's in, no, no. who's in charge, but there's just certain people who destroy lives and for you and resonate because the Scousers, for anybody watching, why is it they hate the Tories so much? Well, look, anyone watching, obviously, you've, I mean, you've got to look back at when it was looked to be ran. You know, the, the actual Tories actually tried to man, you know, run Liverpool into a state and manage the clan. That's on documents, do you know what I mean? That was like official, do you know what I mean? The people who ran this country wanted to run this city into a state of managed decline. Basically, I mean, they were just forgetting about us. Unemployment was at an all-time high, you know what I mean? More so than anywhere else. It was fucking, you know, there was a smack problem. And people, the, the government were happy to just leave people to to explore with these fucking, this new drug that was being, how was it being brought in? Do you know what I mean? Like, you know, there's fingers in all sorts of pies and then obviously you move to the Hillsborough scenario, do you know what I mean? Which is Thatcher's government trying to cover up, you know, the murder of, well, 
not intentional murder, but you know, of 96 now, 97, innocent people who just gone to a football game. And you know, the fact that the people died and people were injured and people people's lives were ruined from that. I know someone, you know, God rest him, who actually took his own life 30 years on from Hillsborough and he was still traumatised from when he went that day as an 18 year old with his two best mates he's the only one who came home do you know what I mean and like I hate talking about Hillsborough and I hate playing on the arts of Hillsborough because you know it's it's I wasn't born and I wasn't there and I know just how much it's affected you know people who, who were there and who lived through it you know what I mean but the, 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 not only did it happen when it shouldn't have happened but then you know the government who are supposed to fucking, they're supposed to look after you, aren't they? They're supposed to be the ones that we look to for guidance and safety and, you know, reassurance and comfort, do you know what I mean? They teamed up with the media, the tabloids and the police. Again, police is supposed to protect and serve. That's supposed to be, you know, the nature of the police service and the police officer's role. It's to protect and serve. It's not to antagonise. It's not to fucking, it's not to, what's the word, intimidate. Do you know what I mean? It's not to... And people were intimidated into changing statements and people, it's not to falsify, you know, what actually happened to suit the agenda of your superiors. It's to save the people and save the public, right? And, you know, like I say, me, my best mate's dad got a statement back a few years ago, you know, when the inquests were all made public and stuff like that. And his statement was changed in so many different places. You know, it was like, did you see, you know, those two young girls who died? And it was like, did you see these girls? And it was like, yes. Did you try and help them? Yes. And like, they, all these things were changed to no. And, you know, like, it's really, it was disgusting, do you know what I mean? And like, I probably still shouldn't talk too much about that. But then, you know, the the fact that, the, you know, they tried to blame their own, they tried to blame us. You know, they tried to pin it on their own people saying that we were looting in the pockets of the dead, pissing on the dead. Do you know what I mean? How disgusting is that? This is people's mums, people's brothers, people's sons, people's fucking daughters. Do you know what I mean? People's dads. Do you know what I mean? You just fucking think about that for a second. This is people's lives. Do you know what I mean? And it was just branded in, in a way that that's just, it was so blase. It was just so off the cuff, like how they're to blame. They've killed their own, you know. It took us fucking 30 years just to get the truth about what happened, just to get the real verdict, do you know what I mean? How could anyone in this city stand for that fucking government, you know what I mean? In addition to this, do you know, which was going to go on, so it was like, you know, you look at Manchester in the past 10 years, right? The past 20 years, do you know, like they've had 80% more funding from the Tory government than Liverpool have. Do you know what I mean? You look at Manchester, there's fucking all sorts of areas around Manchester, all built up, new trendy areas, do you know what I mean? See that waterfront there? in Liverpool, that's funded from the European Union, not funded from the fucking Tory government, do you know what I mean? Uh, most of our, most of our income as a city, most, you know, it comes from tourism and the EU, do you know what I mean? We're the European capital of culture and all, we got that bid and we've been helped out massively. We get fuck all from the government, you know what I mean? You'd have to kick and scream and stomp to get anything from them. Now, likewise, now, look at this, look at what's happened in the past fucking three years, right? You've got people now, and I'm Labour, aren't I? No better with this, do you know what I mean? You've got like the Dockers, you look at the Dockers the other day, this city was built on the fucking docks, right? It was built on the docks, the heritage of the Dockers, do you know what I mean? Like this city would, would be on its ass without them Dockers and the Dockers that have manned them Dockers for years and years and years. Now, we pride ourselves on our Dockers and our city, you know what I mean? And it's a big selling point for tourism. It's a big selling point for industry. It's a big selling point for why we get so much businesses because we've got such a successful dockyard, do you know what I mean? And uh, these people are working fucking 70 hours a week sometimes, do you know what I mean? And they, they had to fucking stand on a picket line for two, three weeks, do you know what I mean? To Just to get what they deserve. The fucking... No, no, obviously there was no Tory MP down there showing them any support. The head of fucking Labour, Keir Starmer, who was, in my eyes, a fucking Tory in a red tie, do you know what I mean? He wasn't down there to support them, do you know what I mean? He told people that they shouldn't be on the picket lines, right? Now, let's put this into perspective now, right? Inflation, now, with, with, the, with the energy crisis, right? The energy crisis that, that, that everyone keeps talking about, the energy bills, everyone's bills going up, and we fucking feel it, you know what I mean? I know your, mor you know, your mortgage rate might go up, your water bill's definitely higher. Everything's went up. Everything's fucking up, you, you know, everything's up. The price of a fucking pint of milk in Aldi is higher, do you know what I mean? And these are like affordable supermarkets for people, do you know what I mean? Now, it's up to a couple of days ago, it was up to a rate of about 11%, do you know what I mean? 
Now people, people's wages aren't going up eleven percent, are they? Do you know what I mean? And like, you know, you're looking at firefighters now who were, who were, who were like pick, picketing for the for the better pay and stuff like that. People in the public sector, nurses and all that. It's all going to come. Do you know what I mean? There's, you know, you've got airport staff. Everyone's starting to strike because the wages aren't going up, and you know they're rejecting. And it's like getting people from government saying, you know, these people are rejecting five percent pay cuts. Well, it's like hang on a minute. They still had a fucking six percent pay loss. If if inflation's gone up eleven percent, why should they accept the five percent pay rise? They're still below the fucking breadline. Then do you know what I mean? That fucking extra six percent could be the difference between you eating and your chill, your, your kid eating, and both you eating, or like you say, having eaten on tonight, or having a fucking decent home cooked meal. Do you know what I mean? Like it's disgusting. And but the, and and then what the government are saying to us, what they tell us is, this is why I fucking hate the Tories so much, and this is why people from Liverpool like the Tories. They're telling us, oh, well, we don't have all this fucking money to just to be doing this. Do you know, the whole country's in crisis, even the government. But yeah, what about the fucking 43 billion that all your fucking mates made of fucking track and trace and fucking COVID testing and stuff like that? You look at all them companies, Randox, all of these big track and trace companies, all these companies that got these big fucking contracts and ran all the testing sites, X, Y, and Z. All the fucking CEOs are either related to or best friends with a fucking high swanky Tory MP fucking mem family member of. Do you know what I mean? It's there. It's clear. It's there. You've only got to look. Do you know what I mean? But they, they're earning fucking billions and billions of pounds. Off people's money. Off, off, off a fuck, off people's, off, off some, off a pandemic. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Do you know, off something that people are dying from. Do you know what I mean? They're making money from death. you got that cunt, Matt, Matt Hancock. You know what I mean? He's a murderer, mate. He's a fucking mass murderer. Nearly one in the jungle. He's on the yeah. he's on the jungle. Oh, I just want people to to know I'm a fucking nice guy. Do you know what I mean? Fucking hell, mate. What about fucking Charles Manson? Is anyone putting him on the telly to say, I oh, know he's a nice guy? He's a fucking mass murderer. Do you know what I mean? Mm. There's no distinguish. Do you know what I mean? What that cunt's done people with people? It easy, but that's the thing. It's yeah, outside, yeah, like yeah. That. You've got to look at fucking Boris Johnson. Everybody was locked in at Christmas. People fucking scared, not seeing family members who were dying. These cunts are having Christmas parties. Lads, Zero fucks given. Well, we didn't at know at the time, but it's all, you must, you know, go to work, don't go to work, stay in and, you know, get the fucking bus and do this and do that. You know what I mean? Whilst I'm going to sniff cocaine in a private party and, you know, Downing Street with my 18-year-old Russian mistress and fucking, you know what I mean? And, like, it's just like... One rule for one and one rule for the others. It's fucking disgusting, do you know what I mean? And you wonder why we say we hate the Tory so much. The lying, thieving, fucking murdering crooks. Do you know what I mean? And like, just off what I've said, then should be enough to make people go, hang on a minute, yeah. Do you wear it? Do you know what I mean? Question it. Oh, well, it's all this bollocks, like, do you know, like the nurses now, the NH on the NHS, are fucking trying to get a pay rise and it's like, oh, no, we can't give you it. But it's all right, you know. Oh, the nurses on our front line, you know, everyone... Get on, get on your front doorstep and bang some fucking pots and pans together. But now you want a bit more money? Fuck off, you're out your depth. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. You know, but if you look at like the Houses of Parliament on days that MPs pay rises, which they got, of course. Do you know what I mean? You look at like, um, you, oh, you've got to look, it was, it was on, you know, not this, Marcus Rashford, they took a fucking Premier League footballer to get kids who live below the breadline fed on school holidays, do you know what I mean? Like, fucking school dinners, do you know what I mean? It's, why wouldn't you feed hungry kids, do you know what I mean? Why wouldn't you break any bank expense known to man to feed the hungry kids in, in your fucking country that you're supposed to be looking after? That's rule number one, innit? Feed the fucking children, mate. Do you know what I mean? Don't have starving kids on the streets. And it took a fucking footballer, sorry for me language, but obviously you can see how, how, much, how annoyed I am about it, but it took a footballer to fucking go and meet him, write letters and do this, that, the other, do you know what I mean? I know for a fact that one of my local MPs, Dan Carden, who's, in, who's a constituent for Walton, right? I know that when Theresa May in 2016, when she, when she was Prime Minister, he went to her with that same fucking bill, the same bill. So any kids who, who, has to, who gets free school dinners because he can't afford it, you know, the parents can't afford it, he's from a single parent family, he's from, you know, a, Double paid family that still can't afford to pay the bills. Do you know what I mean? If he gets fucking a school dinner when school's on, just because he's not going to school doesn't mean his mum and dad are earning any more money. He still needs to be fed when school's off. So I want to start this. So there's communities where, you know, hubs which children can go to, underprivileged children can go to in the school holidays once a day 
to get a good meal and she laughed him out of the fucking room. Do you know what I mean? She laughed him out of the fucking room. Do you know what I mean? And and all of a sudden, and you know, four years later, you've got Marcus Rashford now doing that and it gets done. Do you know what I mean? But what, yeah. what the fuck, man? Do you, know, it, do you think as the bigger you get, you can then try and do something like Marcus Rashford when you get that yeah. social media presence? That You listen to music for back in the day, you talk about Bob Dylan, you talk about... Um, who song Fast Car again? Tracy Chapman. Tracy Chapman. Like, yeah. Timeless music that people can listen to, resonate with and make changes with it. But do you think as you can get bigger, a bigger status, you can start making more and more changes to then that's, try and help the people of Liverpool as well? That's the game, do you know what I mean? I mean, at the minute, I'm still trying to get on that platform where I fucking, do you know, I, or even get to a financial situation where I can give a lot more back than I do now, do you know what I mean? Like, I've already tried to do that. So before I even released my first single, Weekend of Paradise, LA, 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 you know, which was the Liverpool song that sort of put me on the map with Liverpool fans mm. worldwide. Like, I'd, I'd never earned a penny from music up to this day, do you know what I mean? Up to that day that, and LA, 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 what we done was we recorded it and we, we give all of the money, every bit of money that comes in goes to a local charity in the city called An Hour For Others. Do you know what I mean? And this was back when I was still working as a spark and could have done with a fucking few extra quid myself. Do you know what I mean? But in my eyes, it was like, nah, man, hang on a minute. This is a Liverpool song sung by the people of Liverpool. It shouldn't be lying in my pockets. It should be looking after the people of Liverpool. Do you know what I mean? So to this date, I think it's probably give about 60 or 70 grand to that charity. Do you know what I mean? And that's like, that's massive for, for a charity like that to be able to, to rely, you know, obviously... It doesn't come as constantly, you know, the better Liverpool do, the more that charity will earn through the people listening to it. But, you know, like, for that charity to be able to have had that, you know, what it's done for them to be able to instill the change in the area, you know, it's amazing. And I'm so proud of not only myself, you know, Boss Nice as well, because we worked on that together to make that done. And, you know, I made up that I was able to do that. And yeah, you know, look, look at Paddy the Baddy now. Do you know what I mean? He signed a couple of big sponsorships and he's doing the right thing. He's he started up a charity and he wants to give back. He wants to look after people here. Do you know what I mean? He wants to look after the people that have looked after him. And likewise, I want to look after the people who look after me. You know what I mean? I'm writing for these people. These people, even though it's hard enough to fucking feed themselves and the family, they're still not finding a tenner to buy an album. They're still finding 30 quid to buy a gig ticket. They're finding 20 quid to buy a fucking book or that. Do you know what I mean? And I, I know how hard it is. Do you know what I mean? And it's... It's overwhelming yeah. for me to see that level of support from people, you know, who, who, who are from the background that they are. Mm -hmm. So, of course, one day, yeah, that's that's my dream. My dream is to be able to to have a charity, to have a foundation, to have a hub where not just children, you know what I mean? People, you know, of all ages and fucking backgrounds can come for a bit of safety and a bit of shelter. I think a big thing for me is mental health, do you know what I mean? Because I think, you know, you can, you can improve your financial situation you know what I mean, with a bit of guidance and stuff like that, you know, if you fell on hard times, but the mental damage that you've done to yourself in them hard times is always going to be harder to, to to recuperate from, do you know what I mean, and to to, to get better from. And I, 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 I've suffered with mental health myself since, you know, being in the limelight and that, not through, like, you know, any traumatic childhood experiences or nothing like that, because, as I said, I had a great childhood. But, like, you know, since being in the public eye and, you know, social media and X, Y, and Z, my mental health's fucking suffers and still does at times do you know what i mean but to people and you know man that's like man's like almost like a fucking first world problem do you know what i mean my mental health do you know what i mean but, but it to, doesn't matter what no it doesn't, life it doesn't because if you're struggling you're struggling and that's yeah. the important thing that's the important message like like you say people might think he's fucking flying high he's doing this and singing in front of 60 000 liverpool fans he's top 10 album in the charts like it doesn't mean fuck all if you're no, whatever you're overthinking would you think that as it's creating that you know you say social media like we kind of recluse beforehand but you sing in front of crowds and that like yeah it's not but that's the thing that's 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 like the that's, your getaway is that, that your freedom that's like your thingy yeah like you know I, I used to be a lot better with it you know what I mean like obviously like when you first start off and you're playing to 300 400 people and they're all your mates you don't take nothing for you you're just like one of the lads you don't take yourself very seriously I still don't take myself too seriously do you know what I mean but like now you know like I don't know, even like you go to Tesco, do you know what I mean, for like a pint of milk. It's fucking hectic, do you know what I mean? It's hectic, <laughs> do you know what I mean? And it's like, it, you know, and you can't, 
obviously you've got you smile and you're like yeah yeah you, you know you're it's all right act. but if you're having a bad day you mm -hmm. still gotta put that fucking act on do you know what I mean mm -hmm. because it's not the person's fault that you've had a bad day and they're just happy to see it and they want to fold them and they want to chat and stuff like that and that's not like the main suffering me mental health and it's come from bad experiences do you know what I mean it's come from people fucking giving me a bit of shit and, and people like making an assumption about me before knowing me and stuff like that and like you know I had a couple of fucking Evertonians like block the road once do you know when I was trying to drive home from a match and you were like don't move for this cop I cunts and that and I'm like look lads I'm fucking my best mates are fucking blue what are you on about you know what I mean it's a game of football fucking move do you know what I mean I'm going home I'm not causing no trouble I'm not trying to antagonise no one I'm in my fucking car I've left the game early to get away from anything like this and I'm fucking faced with it now and they're just walking stopping in front of the car and so I was fucking winding them up, you know what I mean? Like sort of reversing and then driving and stopping and going, whoa, you know, like trying to have a laugh. A couple of them saw the funny side, one definitely didn't. Some was like almost booting the fucking car saying, you know, watch what happens if you hit me, blah, blah, blah. And you know, like inside, what I wanted to do was jump out the fucking car. Do you know what I mean? Run the cunt over. Yeah, run the cunt over, go and get me fucking crowbar, do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. dinghy bar. And I just wanted to go and grab that out the boot and say, come on then, soft lads, mm. do you know what I mean? But... You know, obviously in my head, I'm thinking, well, there's four of them there. There's another fucking 500 Evertonians coming up the road here. What are they going to do? Do you see fucking me running out, fucking trying to scrap with one of theirs? I'm getting it, aren't I? My car's getting it. Not only that, people are going to film me and be like, Jamie Webster kicking reputation? off, blah, blah, blah. So I had to sit there and smile and pretend yeah. like I wasn't phased by it. Fucking hell, mate. When they eventually fucked off and I got away, I was rattling. Do you know what I mean? I couldn't even drive home. I had to pull over and was like, do you know what I mean? I'm shook. Do you know what I mean? And I've had... Do you know, and, and it's certain words and sniggers that you're having when you are in Tesco and someone gives you the look, you think, where's this going to go here? Mm. Do you know what I mean? And you doubt yourself and all of a sudden, yeah, all of a sudden you're, not, you're not the same person walking out your house and it, it happens without mm. knowing it. And it got to a point where like, do you know, and, and then also, you know, you do things on social media, like, you know, you fucking come out and, you know, for, I think one of them was Paddy was fighting in, and I was in Texas. I'd been playing a festival in Texas the week. And, um, you know, like now because of social media, unfortunately, it does. It's for someone like me, as, as far as it's not real life, and I'll say it's a far cry from my fucking real life and how I am in, in real life. But, you know, you'd have to use social media to, to enhance your profile and, and to get further places. And, you know, you need good video content. You need good video quality. You know, if you were doing this off your fucking iPhone, mate, yeah. You know, for a fact, it wouldn't be as great as it is because people want clarity, they want quality, they want audio, they want mm -hmm. visual. So I've got, you know, and because these lads are doing a documentary, I've got camera lads knocking around with me in Texas for the full week. I'm fucking having a bite of a butty. What does that butty taste like, Jamie? Do you know what I mean? And you're like, oh yeah, yeah. it's nice. They're lovely lads they're doing a job. They're doing what they've been told to do. Do you know what I mean? No problems with them. But then, you know, they're filming me as I'm watching me two fucking good mates scrap in the UFC. So I'm fucking tearing up, screaming, oh, I'm Ali, fucking kill her, same with Paddy, you know, choke the cunt out, lad, fucking blah, blah, blah. I don't mean, I don't actually want him to kill the person, I just want him to win the fight, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? He's my mate. I wouldn't even watch the UFC if it weren't for them, do you know what I mean? It's, it's local pride sort of thing, and I'm fucking screaming, I'm, you know what I mean? And then, you know, I have lads running me Twitter and me fucking Instagram, and these videos just get sent from the camera lads to the people who do the post and they edit it and it goes up and I'm fucking asleep in bed. Do you know what I mean? Because they've posted it at UK time and I wake up in the morning. Fucking hell, mate. Every man and his dog call, coming out calling me a scruffy tramp. Fucking, you know, I've got a big gap in between me teeth. People are calling me that. People are fucking, like, got one to, like, absolutely terrorising me. Like, I mean, some horrible things said, do you know what I mean? And then you, like... It, become, it starts to become like a thing. You're getting like fucking 14 year old lads and girls saying stay to this cunt and you know what I mean? And you're getting like lads from fucking Manchester, lads from fucking Bolton, do you know what I mean? Writing shit about you and you're writing songs for like them. Do you know what I mean? You like you look at the Twitter profile and you think you're fucking bricklayer from fucking Bolton. I'm writing songs about you. Do you know what I mean? I'm trying to make things better for the likes of you. Do you know what I mean? I'm trying to like fucking give people like you yeah. a voice that don't have a voice in this fucking mad world anymore but the sad reality is mate when you start doing well you're going to get that because yeah. people are, are scared about their own life they're scared to see other people's success so I'll, I'll post clips in my podcast and people say oh you're promoting this and this you're shit you're this and that but they can't follow me they follow me yeah fuck off then it's mad it's like if you don't want to see it yeah, don't, don't, don't do it but, but that's just people in their own misery so I feel sorry for those sort of people that like, you're watching something and, and having a dig at something completely like no matter who you are no matter how big you get like 
nobody wants to be hated upon. Nobody wants nah, people to stand in front of your car because you're thinking, well, I'm not doing anything bad. Yeah. I made a homeless documentary and I get shit for that. Yeah. So I try to do the exactly. It's trying to amplify expose what's fucking happening in the streets and oh, you're doing it for this and this. I'm like, oh, Again, fuck off. It's disgusting. It's like even you know people saying things about Paddy, you know, from the weekend and that. He's like, fuck off, mate. You yeah. try and do an interview riled on adrenaline after fucking scrapping with some absolute monster for three rounds do you know what I mean you just want a fucking battle do you know what I mean yeah adrenaline's high look at Anthony Joshua do you know when Anthony Joshua come out and done that it's like normal people like not normal people people who have never been in that situation they don't know like can you imagine the, like the feeling that's going through Paddy's body there and then you know he's one and people are like he's just you know what I mean? He's talking, and I think he spoke quite well, to be honest. I think he, he, he you know, he, he tried to turn it, you know, because people were like trying to be controversial about, you know, did he, did he not win the fight, which he did win, by the way. Um, people are being controversial about it, and then people start saying, you know, he's talking about his charity, he's trying to spin it on a positive, do you know what I mean? And people are saying, oh, he's doing that for public. No, he's fucking not. He's got, he doesn't need any fucking publicity. He's baddie the fucking baddie. Do you bow, know what I mean? People bulge you up. And when you get to a certain level, they want to see you fail. Yeah, well, they like, want to see you jumping out of the well, car, knocking a cunt down an Everton fan. They want to see Paddy flaw them they want to see yeah. him getting battered they want to see Molly getting beat they want to see something bad happens because it makes them feel okay that I was always a prick yeah, anyway yeah. or he was always shit like this is a society in the life we're in social media is destroying people's health see when you're having a bad day what do you what steps do you do to try and push through it and but keep going see, I didn't I, like for, for a long time I fucking wasn't getting out of bed. Do you know what I mean? I, I was yeah like, I was, you speak to me bed you speak to me mum and dad you know I was fucking because do you see in like Lads, who, who, like you say, you representing girls that you're representing, saying things, and then it's got 2,000 likes and all people commenting on it, and you know what I mean? You think this is spiraling out of control here. Or, you know what I mean? What, I don't even know these people are fucking calling me this, calling me that, I'm getting called a nonce. Do you know what I mean? Because <laughs> I've got long hair. Do you know what I mean? And you're like, what the fuck? Do you know yeah. what I mean? Like, and and you, you, you can never prepare yourself for it, obviously, until you see it. And I'm quite a sensitive person, do you know what I mean? And like, it, it, things do cut when I see them, do you know what I mean? And, I, I you know, you t I'm... I'm Fucking hell, mate. I go to a food bank in the city, I start crying. Do you know what I mean? Because I'm, I'm appalled that people are fucking living the way that they are. Do you know what I mean? I am a sensitive person. So if people are saying things about me, I'm, I'm going to get upset as well. Do you know what I mean? And to be honest, it took me to therapy to fucking to find out how to, to deal with it. You know what I mean? And now it's just a case of, well, I don't have Twitter on my phone, for example. I've, I've deleted Twitter. Do you know what I mean? It's toxic. It's Could, a horrible couldn't, place. couldn't help, couldn't help, but... You know, I have a Twitter account and that, and I tell my social media lads what to do, and you know, put this out, and yet yeah, this is the words you need to say for it. You know what I mean? So I am still posting, but just through someone else's fucking phone. But I'm not seeing what what's what's being said back to me. Do you know what I mean? I'm not seeing. So I say, I mean, do not it? Yeah, that's it. And it's more like you know, like even in in you know, in like you know, in public places now where like people, you know, it's a bit, it's a bit like you can just, it's all right mm. to be like. Yeah, Sam, mate, I can get a photo, but then I've got to go. Do you know what I mean? Or like, yeah, Sam, mate, that's fine if you think like that, but I really don't want to talk about this today. Do you know what I mean? If someone's coming and trying to be controversial, I've got a bone to pick with you. Do you know what I mean? That's what you get. Sometimes you get that after gigs as well. Do you know what I mean? Excuse me, just want a word there. Uh, do you know what I mean? And you're like, what the fuck do you want a word for, mate? You've come, you've seen the gig, I've given you 110% on stage, I'm fucking knackered now. I've got a photo with you, got a photo with your sister, I've got a photo with your fucking brother, I've sent a message to your fucking dog, do you know what I mean? <laughs> like, now what, yeah. what do you possibly have to say now? Do you know what I mean? Can you not see up? you know what I mean? And it's like, you know, I don't agree with And you're like, look, mate, like, you know, in the past I'd get riled up and it fucking, and then I'd react. And then what'd get me down was the fact that like an hour later I come, he's a fan of him, I shouldn't have spoke to him like that. And it'd eat me inside, do you know what I mean? So now it's like, look, mate, I've I've done the gig. I've given you the hundred and ten percent on stage. I've got photos with everyone. I've been very, you know, obligatory to whatever mm. you've asked. I'm tired now, mate. Don't really want to have this conversation. I just want to get on on the bus and and wind down. I've got this all to do again tomorrow, and that's like me sort of like I have to explain myself, but without explaining myself. Do you know what I mean? You just tell them that you, and just go and even like to the point of having like you know certain gigs in certain towns that I go to, having someone with me. Not like a minder, like someone who's trained in close protection, and it's not even like to just. Yeah, it's for your own safety. It's just, you've, got, you've got to that level now, but it, you don't know who is it, out there because there's a lot of mad bastards out yeah. there. And it's just like when, because very obviously when people are pissed 
and I don't drink. Do you know what I mean? I'm the same. So that's the worst. See, after that events, we do hands on, that, like, hands on. It's only like seven, eight hundred people in that, but after it, at the night, they're all sheepish. Yeah, they don't want to really say. But after a few pints, it comes ten o'clock, eleven o'clock. Yeah. People are grabbing you and asking stupid questions, and it's not your being a cunt. And it's like because it's draining after speaking, speaking, even doing a podcast, two hours draining because they're giving it hundred percent concentration. And it's the, it's the, it's the, it's almost the, the thing that the, that gets me. It's the right to people think because they've been there. Well, I, I own a bit of you now. I own, I, I'm, you I have a human. Yeah, I have yeah. a right to like grab you here yeah, and pull yeah. you here and you know you, you know what was that? It was like well, I was in Tesco and it was like, all right, lad, we got a photo. And it was like, yeah, Sammy. It's like, will you say a message to me, lad? And you're like, yeah, yeah, hello, lads. Thanks for the support. You know, be good. Blah blah blah, and it's like right. Will you call me mate and knobhead? And you're like no. Do you know what I mean, lad? I'm not. I don't, who is he? I don't know. He could be some fucking mad cunt. I'm not calling him a, a knobhead. I oh, know, lad. He hates you. He doesn't like you. I'm like, well, even more reason for me not to call him a knobhead. Then do you know what I mean? Like, no. Do you know what I mean? I'm like, oh fucking hell, lad. What are you being like that for? And you're like, what am I being like that for, lad? You stop me. You know what I mean? I'm with me fucking fiance in the shop. You know, I'm fucking. I've got X, Y, and Z to do today. You stop me now for fucking a minute and a half. I've done everything. I've been dead nice. You've got the one time I, I don't feel comfortable doing something. Now I'm being like that. I'm being a knobhead, am I? Do you know what I mean? And then all of a sudden he's like, well, don't speak to me like that, lad. And you're like, well, what other choice have I got, lad? You didn't take no for an answer. Do you know? And all of a sudden, Jamie Webster's in Tesco kicking off at some fella. Do you know what I mean? And it's like fucking, it's, it's, it's not always easy. So for like, when I am in, social situations like round gigs and that and knowing you're tired and you fucking you could be maybe it's more for me so if I if I can be a bit like temperamental and be like well hang on a minute mate you know what I mean or snappy or whatever it's just someone there to just go you'll be with you in a minute lad there's a couple of people here just let them see it you know what I mean and then when a couple of photos have done if, if someone's making me feel uncomfortable just give Louis a look and he'll just go Right, lad, that's enough now. Mm -hmm. And this lad looks after the fucking Liverpool team and that, you know what I mean? He's yeah. not soft and people take one look at him and go, all right, mate, it's yeah. sound, <laughs> do you know what I mean? And like, yeah. it's sound. And even the band feel better about it now because like the band were getting harassed. It's like, oh, tell Jamie this. And fucking like the band had put something, you know, give set lists into the crowd and they get pulled in and yeah. he's just there. He's just like, look, fucking hell, mate. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's sort of, but it's not all the time, but that, that has helped. But definitely therapy. Just help me, do you know what I mean? The, the lady I spoke to, she gave me some tools to like, when you're going into social situations to prepare yourself to pre prepare yourself for, you know, if I'm really bad and I feel like I've had a bit of an episode or whatever. Is it panic attacks? Yeah, not like a full on panic attack. I couldn't say I've ever had a full one. I've had very close to one, I think, you know what I mean? Like, and uh, pranayama, you know, like a breathing exercise in the morning and it really like, calms you down. Calms me down, that's a good one. But like, that, that's why I was going back to like the charity side. I'd love to be able to help people with food support and, oh. you know, housing support. But I think a big thing, what I'd love to help people with is mental, you know, mental health counselling, some sort of therapy because, you know, I paid for my therapy and, you know, I was thankful. It wasn't, not an extortionate, but, you know, it was still an expense, do you know what I mean? And we've oh. just been sp spent an hour and a half here or whatever an hour talking about how people don't have a pot to piss in with the, increasing rates of energy and everything else, do you know what I mean? Inflation in general. So like, I'd love to be able to give people free counselling, do you know what I mean? Like, it's you know, important, man. I, I, like... And I'd love to, to be able to amplify the importance of speaking to someone, do you know what I mean? And yeah, that's something that I really, like I, I feel really strongly about. And cause you know, you don't understand it until it happens to you because I didn't understand, I'll be, I didn't understand it, you know, I had, mates who took their own lives and stuff like that a few years back and like your first my t first thought at one of them was you selfish bastard do you know what I mean what have you done that for and you know I used to think oh mental health's like it's selfish you're not looking at the big picture but then it's only when it happens to yourself you realise you can't see the big picture because it's just so fucking daunting and overwhelming you don't know who you are anymore do you know what I mean almost and you feel so lost and like did you feel yourself going down the suicide or no, did it cross no, your mind? No, suicide's not because because I've because I've had friends who've. But if you it, never it, got the therapy, potentially another year. Yeah, it could spiral. That, like, could spiral. Yeah, it takes a brave thing to get. It, it, you're a stronger person getting therapy than anything because that shows that you are strong. Instead of showing being weaker and weaker and weaker and weaker, 
it then pushes you over the edge and it's sad to think that nobody wants to be in this earth because it can be a great place as well as much as all the shit that comes with it like, but it's all about how you can control it up here like, for you to go and get therapy especially at a young age not even 30 yet but yeah. then because of your life then that gives you more content to speak about that gives you more opportunity to then try and help others why? because you're living it yeah well I just remember like being in a hotel room in, in Reykjavik in Iceland on my own do you know what I mean? And it was, weather was fucking miserable. I was at like my wits end and I hadn't, I'd, I'd had the number. Do you know what I mean? And I hadn't messaged her to say, can I have a call? And I remember being sat there and I was sat in this hotel room, like literally on my own, no one who else was working was flying out till the next day of fuck all. The sort of side of the industry people don't see, there's a lot of loneliness, do you know what I mean? There's a lot of being away from your friends and family and all that shit, you know what I mean? Like hotel rooms are nice, do you know what I mean? But fucking, the much nicer with your fucking bed in it. Do you know what I mean? Or your little dog or whatever, or your parents in the next fucking room or whatever, or friends out and about with you, do you know what I mean? But I remember being in this hotel room and I was literally lowered, low, probably the lowest I've ever been. And I think my parents were worried about me, me, my fiance was definitely worried about me, do you know what I mean? And I just, like, my management were worried about me. Everyone was a bit, like, you knew. You know, it was only a certain people who could tell. But, uh, like, I made the call and it was, I just remember, like, fucking hell, I think most of the phone call was just me bawling, do you know what I mean? And even after it, bawling. But then I woke up the next morning, man, and I just felt so much lighter, do you know what I mean? I f like my shoulders were left heavy, my were less heavy, my head was less heavy. And it was because she'd made sense, and she just, you, so half the time you just need someone to tell you that you're not going fucking crazy, and that you're justified in to be feeling the way you're feeling. Because that was my thing, it was like, why am I feeling like this? I've got more than all of these, do you know what I mean? Or I'm doing this, do you know what I mean? And like, so many people have fucking killed to be in my position. Why do I feel like this? There's something fucking wrong with me. I shouldn't be feeling like this. And it was only when the therapist said, well, actually, they don't understand how you feel and they will never get the chance to experience that. And, you know, as much as it can be, a, you know, a blessing doing what you're doing, it can also be a curse and this is why. And, you know, she she's someone who's worked with people with much higher profiles than me. And it was just... It was a breath of fresh air and I I think I had seven or eight sessions with it. It wasn't an extensive thing where like I was in therapy for years. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? It was quite recent, do you know what I mean? It was, it was within the year, this last year. And uh, just the tools that she gave me just really, really helped me. And like I know who I am now. Do you know what I mean? Well, I always knew who I was, but I know who I am walking into situations that make me uncomfortable, do you know what I mean? If I know that something's potentially going to be like a lot of people pissed that's the thing pissed people that's what really really gives me the anxiety because you can't control it in any way there's so many elements that you can't control if you know if if if, if you're going into a I don't know if you're going to, I don't know did the fucking pictures or something mm -hmm. do you know tends to be most people on the pictures yeah. they might have one or two but they're not fucking bevy they might say hello lads can I have a quick photo that sound but it's when, when it's really when people are pissed and they mm -hmm. start telling you to sing give us a song lads and you're like well Nah, man, I'm in fucking I'm in the pictures, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like, oh, and oh, Greg's. fuck off. Give us a fucking song. I thought you were a fucking singer. Man of the people, all this. Give us a fucking song. You're like, well, now you're just being disrespectful. Do you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. what do you do for a living? I always say to people, oh, I'm a bricklayer. Go on, then we'll fucking build me a fucking <laughs> chimney, lads. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> or like, fucking, you know, what, what do you, you know what I mean? What do you do? What, what, what's your job, lads? Oh, yeah, I'm a, I'm a pharmacist. I'll tell you what, then, lad. Write me a prescription for fucking 40 diazepam and I'll sing you the fucking song, all right? You know what I mean? No, you can't do that. Well, neither can I. You know what I mean? It's just like little things like that when people think that you're like a fucking, mm -hmm. you know, a performing monkey when they're pissed. It's always when they're pissed and they're like, ah, nah, 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 you know what I mean? Fucking do they're just mm -hmm. this, that, baby, this, that, baby, that, blah, blah. blah. And you're like, yeah, it's sad, I get it. You know what I mean? I get it. And I try and be accommodating. But then once I do be accommodating and then you overstep the line further, then, do you know what I mean? That's yeah. where it worries me because I try my best to be nice to everyone. And if I do have a bit of compensation or a bit of awkwardness with someone, it plays on my mind a lot in the days later. Do you know what I mean? And I always I wish I could see that person again so I could just set myself straight. And it was the therapist, he was like, well, no, hang on, you don't need to because you didn't do fuck all wrong, do you know what I mean? They've done, you know, yeah. and all that. They've overstepped the matter. So the same boundaries for yourself and understand that you're not in the wrong if you're saying to people no. It's just learning how to say no. Like, yeah, that's it. That's it. No, that's I've it. done too much. I've took a photo. Like, but see, when you released your first song, like, Weekend in Paradise, like, yeah. how were you feeling after that? 
Yeah, boss, because it was obviously it was a song that was fucking resonates with so many people. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? No That's matter, the first thing I had heard of you. Yeah, it was, no matter what walk of life, whether you've got a fucking load of dough, you've got nothing, whether you're a posh cunt or whether you're a rough ass, do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Chances are you've been through that, you know what I mean, at some point in your life, do you know what I mean? And I just think that is the universal song that sort of grabs everyone's attention. Politics aside, do you know what I mean? It's not a very political tune, do you know what I mean? It's all about you and what you do to yourself and what, you know what I mean, how you deal with that. And if it works for you and you're having, making memories that'll last a lifetime, then crack on, son. Do you know what I mean? No problem at all with me. Fucking happy for you. But... If it is making you fucking anxious, if it is make, if it is starting to get to you, if it's fucking having an effect on your day to day because you've got no fucking money or because you fucking you know you're not in the right frame of mind or because the drugs are making you depressed or whatever, you know what I mean? If it's starting to fucking have an effect on yourself as a person and in a negative way, then maybe it's time to call it into question, cut back a bit. You know, maybe go out for two days instead of three or fucking you know, just once a weekend or none at all. Do you know what I mean? Whatever works for you. But that song's, you know, it can be translated to suppose any individual. Do you know what I mean? You could sort of listen to that unless you're fucking square and you've never been out and had a good time in your life. Do you know what I mean? But it doesn't even have to be fucking drugs. It could just be the ale. Do you know what I mean? It could be whatever. It could be gambling or whatever. Do you know what I mean? You can interpret it to whatever. But I've, I've felt so proud. Do you know what I mean? Like, I think, I remember like, you know, on an indie label, remember, do you know what I mean? And it was like basically my own market and it was my own social media profiles and basically Liverpool fans, do you know what I mean, at the time? Because I hadn't done not on no Liverpool since up to that point. And I think we were like, yeah, if we can get to like a thousand, between one and five thousand streams on the first day, do you know, you've really, really made a statement there. And like, you know, you'll get promoters sort of looking at that and like, you know, you might get a, you know, this couple of people interested in whatever. And I woke up, remember waking up. So it had come out at midnight and I woke up at like eight o'clock. I looked at my phone and there's this thing called Spotify for artists. So you can tell you how many people are listening at that moment in time and exactly how many streams you've done to the second. And I fucking turned it on. It was like 7,000 streams at nine o'clock. Do you know what I mean? I was like, what the, f-? like 400 people listening now. And like the label were like fucking, because obviously I'd never worked with the label before or not, and it's all beer or not. They were like, this is fucking surreal. This doesn't happen, do you know what I mean? Like fucking hell. And it, we got to 35,000 streams by the end of the day. Got to like 100,000 in three, four days, do you know what I mean? It was like, what? And then that's when the fucking, you know, like promoters started being like, look, do this gig, gig sells out, do you know what I mean? And it was like, well, fucking hell, it's starting to happen a little bit now. Do you know what I mean? Then obviously we had the hook with Jerry. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Which I thought maybe not. And then done my first gig in the Zanzibar. Like my single launch, my first single launch. And fucking, you know, everyone there had a good time. But I died the death on stage. I thought it's me and me, me manager at the time. Like, because Weekends in Paradise was great. And I had my stomp box doing it. But I had to write all these other songs and like, I had, like you are saying at the start, I had visions for these songs and I had visions of people singing these songs back to me. And like, more feel me, you know, it was my first gig and none of the people in the room had any heard any of the other songs other than this place, I think, because a few people who had played it in Boss Nights and stuff. But all, all the other eight or nine songs that I played, no one had ever heard. And I'm like, why aren't people, you know, in my head, why aren't, like, because all I'd been used to for three, four years was fucking Liverpool's fans screaming every word, singing for me almost, do you know what I mean? I'd sing the first word and they'd just go. So like I'd come into a bar where people were having a bevy, people were having a chat while I was singing, people were still coming in. It was fucking weird for me. I'd been through this since I was like 15 and in a band, do you know what I mean? And it was like, whoa, I've gone backwards here because it was because I'd gone to such a profile and such a place with the Liverpool songs where we were playing to thousands of people. And I'm coming back to 300 people in a fucking small room and it was like, whoa. And like, I just didn't, I couldn't, you know, I was trying to make this stomp box do loads of the work for like songs that didn't need it and songs that needed a drummer and a guitarist and a fucking bass player, do you know what I mean? And like, come off sixes and sevens and like, that was the day that like, we were like, right, you need a band now. Do you know what I mean? Like, we need to, we need a band to make these songs fucking as exciting as like the lyrics are basically, do you know what I mean? Your first album went top 10. Yeah. But how were you feeling when that again, dropped? The target was top 50. You know, on an indie label and you know, other bands knocking around, we're getting in and about the top four to you. Six, six, number six. Six, yeah, fucking. Mm. It was mad, do you know what I mean? Like, I think what happened, you know what, honestly helped. And like, I'll be honest, and you know, where people say, oh, lockdown killed me. Lockdown killed me from a live point of view where I wasn't earning any money. But like, from a 
promo point of view, football had stopped and everyone, and my biggest challenge was the crossover, right? The crossover from Jamie Webster, LA, 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 to Jamie Webster, singer songwriter, do you know what I mean? In his own right, that mm -hmm. sings Liverpool songs as well. That's what we needed to get to, do you know what I mean? Oh, he's a Liverpool fan, he does that thing, but this is where his thing is with the band and with his own songs and, you know, whatever. And, uh, like, I think because the football stopped and I, no one's seen videos of me singing fucking Virgil van Dijk, you know what I mean, on Twitter, every fucking day. I think, like, the fact that I was just talking about this album, it was people were listening because, A, people needed something to fucking listen to at that time. Everyone was bored shitless. I give them a bit of focus and I'm, like, talking about my album and I'm talking, you know, it was a completely different side of me that people were used to and people were interested by it. And because, like I say, there was no football and there was no LA, LA, LA at the same time as me doing all this, people weren't getting confused and people who weren't necessarily football fans or necessarily Liverpool fans were being given the time and space to sort of see this enough without it being interfered by a Liverpool song and go, oh, hang on, well, you know, then something's got to give, stuff like that come out in the campaign and, you know what I mean, a couple of songs that were really talking about what was going on at the time and maybe summarising the period, do you know what I mean, almost, and it just really helped, do you know what I mean, it just, I was able to immerse myself completely into my own music and the album come out and fucking, you know, it was just surreal. We were like setting targets, like, right, we're at 500 sales. We need to get to like another 500 by two weeks' time. Do you know what I mean? And then we get three days later and we're like, right, we're on 1200 sales here. Do you know what I mean? So we'd set a new target, like be at 2000 by the end of the week and we get to fucking two and a half thousand by the end. You know what I mean? It was just mm -hmm. going like that. And it was just, it was just a fucking amazing thing where like from the get go, we were just, it kept beating our expectations and what like you know what we'd set for it you know what i mean it mm. just kept going past the borders and we were just like fuck this is great but then after we get by we were still on a lockdown and from it going like that it literally went Phew. do you know what i mean because there wasn't i couldn't gig so all the listeners that you can see they all start dropping off or your engagements on your social posts start dropping off mm -hmm. do you know what i mean you you can't do anything about it because you can't gig it was like, what do we do? So that's like, again, it was like, that was a tough time. Do you know what I mean? Because you're wondering, like, by the time we're all allowed back, will everyone have forgotten about it? Will it have just been that five minutes in the sun? Mm -hmm. And these are things that no one knew the answer to at the time. Do you know what I mean? People could have stood there and gone, oh, no, you'll be all right. But that was only them being reassured. And that wasn't them knowing in concrete because yeah. some people it wasn't. Do you know what I mean? And thankfully, thankfully, I was fucking, you know, able to go and write a new album because I had nothing else to do. Do you know what I mean? It was like, well, lad, you can't gig. Actually, this your album, what, a year or two years after that second one? Yeah, it was like February 21, wasn't it? You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Or oh, the end of January 20, 20, mm -hmm. 22. Did you feel more 22? pressure on that because of how well the first one done? Yeah, see, no. Like, there was, uh, everyone was going, uh, when I say, did you, did you feel the pressure? Like, I heard about the pressure of the second album. Everyone was talking about it, about the second album, you know. But, like, it wasn't a... I was lucky because, like, I wasn't gigging. So, like, normally what happens is a band goes out, does the first album, then goes and tours that album, does loads of fezzies, and they're on the road 24-7, and then all of a sudden everyone's like, come on, lads, what else have you got? Where's your next thing? Because everyone always wants the next thing, don't they? And, like, you know, bands who have fucking been on the road for eight months of the year, how are they going to write and record, and you know what I mean? And it was like having to force yourself to write, but for me, I had nothing to do but to, but write, do you know what I mean? I was sat in, sat there with the guitar with no, nowhere to be, nothing to do for months and months on end. And, you know, to, to, thankfully the fire was being fueled by all the shit that was going on. Like, you know what I mean? All the lies we were being told, oh, you can do this or you can't do that now, but you can do this. And, you know, you can't see your nan and granddad, but I can go and have a party. Do you know what I mean? But all that shit. It was just fueling me fire. There was so much to talk about and so much to write about. And, you know, I was trying to capture, like, the feelings of so many different walks of people throughout the pandemic with that album. And it was moments just to... I thought, like, you know, life is all about moments and you've got to live for them. And the moments have been took away from us for now. And that's where the concept comes from for moments, the album, do you know what I mean? And, again, I think 
the pressure with that one was not actually writing it and recording it. It was more marking it, and it was like it needs to beat. We get by. Do you know what I mean? Because otherwise, you haven't even got out and done a tour, and you're already doing, you know, taking yeah. smallest, you know, taking backward steps. So, and it, it was mad because like the first weekend that we we announced moments. We fucked it up. We announced it the same day as the Liverpool game and it got lost in translation and basically like we you know we we had a target for the top ten then because we'd done it with we get by. So there was a bit more pressure in that sense that like we get by it was like top fifty or do us and then we realised we were on for the top twenty halfway through the campaign and then the week off we were like, Fuck we might get the ten here. Do you know what I mean? It was like it was a wonderful surprise. But then because we'd had the ten, it was like we need to make sure we get the ten again. And that was a pressure like of the first weekend that we announced the sales, we come back on the Monday and we were like, oh yeah, we should expect between 3,000 and 4,000 sales now because... Of the first one. And yeah, and because you've gone and you've done a tour, I've done my tour and all that and people, you've separated yourself and you've got more fans and we've done like 300, do you know what I mean? And it was like, fuck. And for the first like few like, months of the campaign, it wasn't moving. And we were like, shit. No, no, I was like, shit. I was like, fuck, like, I'm going to be embarrassed here if this doesn't make the top 20, especially after, like, I've been fucking, because I was so happy with how it sounded and I'd put, I'd had so much time and effort and the sound was just a lot more complete and I was so much more proud of it as, as a body of work and as a piece of music. I've been, like, you know, fool, not foolishly, but, like, confidently saying it's fucking great, this album. It's going to, you know, it's well better than the first one and it's this, that, the other. And... I thought, fucking hell, no one's even going to know about it. Do you know what I mean? Because it's just like, it's not... Thankfully, like, you know, we, we realised that, like, we looked at numbers from the last campaign and we looked up, like, the rules had changed within the charts and stuff like that. So we managed to find a way that suited us and we, we announced a loads of gigs where you, where you bought, like, an album with a gig ticket because we found that that was my strong point, playing live in front of people. So people always wanted to come and see me by the gigs. Like, you'd announce a 300 cap gig and it'd sell out in a second, but you'd announce a limited run of 300 vinyl. And it wouldn't, you know what I mean? You'd get like three bought, and you're like, well, that's my fans, aren't they? The gig goers, they're not fucking collectibles. Do you know what I mean? You have some people, some bands who are like, oh. the fans will deal sell fucking 15,000 vinyl because all the fans are like mad music collectors, but they're doing 400 cap venues. Do you know what I mean? But like, I'm the opposite. I'm doing big venues, but me, me actual sales were less. So what we done was, it was like, make the tickets cheaper, but they have to buy an album with the gig so they're still paying a 20 quid or whatever but we're subsidising half of that towards the album do you know what I mean and it meant that I earned less money doing the gigs and stuff like it meant I earned no money doing the gigs on that run but it meant that we sold another fucking 3,000 albums do you know what I mean so then comes to with your release you're on 5,000 and that week thankfully we smashed it and once the album was out and people listened to it because people still have the mindset well I'm going to try before I buy do you know what I mean and it's fair enough and it's like People want to listen to what they're buying first, and I get it. You know what I mean. And I'm probably the same. I wouldn't. I'll only pre-order a band's album if I'm fucking absolutely like into them, you know, like I was with Jerry. Do you know what I mean? And you're like, I want to order. And even if this album's shit, I still want them to do that well. So I'm going to order the album. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But like normally, you probably go, oh, yeah, like well, like, you know, the Arctic Monkeys album, for example. I didn't pre-order it because I thought, well. To the Arctic Monkeys for a start. Do you know what I mean? Like everyone's gotta buy it and listen to it. Before I buy it, I wanna check I like it. So I just listened to it the day it came out and then obviously ordered the vinyl later. Do you know what I mean? But like that was the thing, you just have to work out what demographic you'd have got, you know, with your fans and stuff like that. And that's yeah, about to say the yeah, things, isn't it? Yeah, and it, that's for the label to do. And obviously I'm very hands on with that side of it, you know, I don't understand it all properly, but yeah. I'm very hands on and how was it singing in front of 60,000 Liverpool fans in Madrid? Yeah, it's fucking, you just, you can never prepare yourself for that shit, you know what I mean? It's like, mm -hmm. you, I still see the video popping up. It's still incredible, you know, like, I can't remember it really. It was just adrenaline, like, you know, like no order, like I'd mm -hmm. never experienced. You know, it was just fucking, I just remember running out on the stage and I just remember saying to myself, be, like, you know, be angry, be energetic, be you. Do you, you know think what I mean? that was your moment to then, yeah, like, I just lay the mark down. Yeah, and well, it was, that was the day of Sammy record deal as well. Because the, it's a funny story. The fella Dave Pitch, he runs our label and he runs Sound City in the city. He's quite quite well known. Um, he 
he was he sorted the stage out for the club that day because he books festivals and stuff. He runs his own festivals and stuff, so he'd save them a bit of money with the production and stuff like that. And he'd been put on a flight just to oversee, you know, any negotiations that might have had to happen on site. And I got sat next to him and I didn't know who he was. And I started chatting to just, you know, just like, oh, hello, he's a scouser like that. Even he was just like, how are you, son? You know what I mean? Are you looking forward to your gig? Didn't let on who he was. Proper fucking Jedi'd me. He was just like, you know, who do you listen to, lad? Just talked, started talking to him about me mates who took their own lives. You know, I was fucking crying on the plane talking to him. Talking about, like, I like Elton John, but I like fucking NWA as well. Do you know what I mean? It's the old tell a story at the end of the day. I was saying a tunes and tune, and he was proper, but proper hit it off. And then it was the end of the end of the fucking end of the flight. He went, Give your number, lads. I might have something of interest for you when you get home. I'm, the fuck are you? <laughs> and, he, and, he, and he went, well, I've got, I've got a record label and I, I, you know, Sound City, the festival in Liverpool. I went, oh yeah, he went, it's my festival. I went, oh, that's Andy in it, lad. Do you know what I mean? Give me a number. And as soon as I finished that day, I can't really remember the gig. I remember playing Weekends in Paradise. I remember seeing people with banners of Weekends in Paradise before it was released. Do you know what I mean? In the thing and it was fucking incredible and family behind me on the stage. I just burst into tears after the gig, like overwhelmed. I don't know why, just overwhelmed with emotion and, I think it was just the one bit I took in at the end was a lay, 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 and it was seeing, seeing like three generations, seeing like a young lad, about 12, then a fella, probably about 34, 35, like that with him, a pair of them to tears, and then his dad, probably about 65, all three of them, three generations of family, crying their eyes out, just fucking lost him in me and what, you know, the, the day, the occasion. And it was just like the biggest day of my life up to that point. And you're just looking around and just, funny enough, I spotted Paddy in that fucking crowd of people. Mm. Uh, see his hair. See this big blonde dick <laughs> jump on top of a rock. Mm. And I was just, all right, Paddy. And, he, and I just seen him do that back to me. Maddest thing. But I just remember seeing all these people and I was just like, what a fucking beautiful sight. Do you know what I mean? Just like, it's just so pure. It was just like, you know, something that you've, you've grew up with from birth. The football team you support, you don't choose it. You know what I mean? And like, it's just such a tribal, inherited fucking coming together of, like, you know, it was just euphoric, it was just joy, it was just love. Do you know what I mean? And it, I don't mean to sound like the fucking fella who started Woodstock here by saying this, do you know what I mean? Trying to, trying to be a cliche hippie bastard or nothing like that, but it was, do you know what I mean? You could feel it. And, like, I just see it and I was just like, it's probably... I just remember saying to yourself, take this in now, because you might not see a better sight than this in your life. Do you know what I mean? And like, I just looked over my shoulder, see my family and just looked back at that. And I, I, I was struggling to sing the rest of the song because it was mm -hmm. like the tears, I could feel it coming. It's fucking hell, mate. And then I just put the guitar down and rap, grabbed this big drape, just wrapped myself in it in my bed, found a way into it. And I was just bawling, do you know what I mean? Just like crying my eyes out, just like happy. Obviously, do you know, I was just like, what the fuck was that? Your family must be proud of you. Ah, oh, they're insanely proud. Look, my mum and dad, like I said, from the very start, they've supported me throughout everything. Do you know what I mean? And like, even though like, you know, I'm a lot more, when I say my politics don't align with they do, but I'm a lot more radical, so to speak. You know what I mean? I'm much further to the left and I'm much more, outspoken about it, you know what I mean? But like my mum and dad have give, give me everything, they've given me the best advice I could have ever asked for. And whether I was playing in a fucking shitty pub with 20 people in or that I'm playing in front of 60,000 people, they've been there. My first tour, they come to every fucking gig up and down the country. And like, the only time that he didn't was Cardiff because my dad was in hospital, do you know what I mean? And he still wanted to get out of Aussie and come. He's fine, like, you know what I mean? It was just a fucking whatever at the time, but eh, uh, yeah, like the, the 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 support I've had from my mum and dad, and like they, they still come to all the gigs. They were at the arena, do you know what I mean? They were side staging fucking Glastonbury. They, you know, they, they, wherever they can get. Obviously, they've got two other kids that they that, that they have to support and look after and be there for as well. But any chance that they get, they're, they're at one of my gigs, and you know, I genuinely wouldn't be sat here without them. Do you know what I mean? I wouldn't be, and they are so proud. Fucking me, dad. He's a, you know, he's a proper scout dad. Do you know what I mean? Builder. Like fucking <laughs> as they come, big fella loves a pint, loves a pie. Do you know what I mean? But uh, <laughs> fucking like you know, 
I never, you know, when I, when he comes backstage after the gigs, you can always see he's being blubbering like a baby. Do you know what I mean? You can see he's being crying. You can that, see you it. get that sensitive side from your dad. I mean, my mum, my mum's very sensitive as well. My dad's not sensitive in the sense just that, proud. like, he's just proud. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. My dad's like, for, he is sensitive probably behind the scenes, but he's a man. Do you know what I mean? I've yeah. never seen that. So the only time I've ever seen, I've never seen him cry, but I've seen that he's been crying. Do you know what I mean? Mm. And because he wouldn't want to let me see it, you know what I mean? But like, that's the only time, the first time I ever seen that from my dad, I think it was in Kiev, when we when I played in front of what, 10,000 people, do you know what I mean? In a square that's now being fucking bombs of smithereens, like, which is mad, do you know what I mean? But now, I mean, parents have always been fucking so proud of me, and like, you know, like I say, the opportunity that they give me has led me to be doing what I'm doing today, so I could never ever sit here and go, oh, I'd, you know, I had a shit upbringing, and I, like, you know, and try and paint a picture of this yeah. fucking, what's the word, the uh, slumdog millionaire type of story, do you know what I mean? Well, for one, I'd need to be a fucking millionaire, which I'm fucking <laughs> far from. But you know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah, it's, it's you know, you don't get anywhere without support, you know what I mean? And yeah. like, thankfully, you know, I'm, I've got a, a great family, you know, great mum and dad's brother and sister who are like, you know, there for me all the time and me, me fiance as well do you know what i mean i met her before all this went so you know she's loyal then yeah yeah of course a, a jumping on the, the yeah, coattails yeah. see when because i know jorgen klopp's a big fan of yours like how's that relationship come about it's mad you know it's crazy because like obviously i don't do as much as the liverpool stuff even though i've just been to america i've just landed back from america doing it which was insane but like the fucking the, the things i've done with that club the rooms i've been in the flights I've been on, do you know what I mean? Like, just the, the, the stuff I've seen and the, the information I've been trusted with by that club, it's it's mad, you know what I mean? It's often, they're often the moments where you pinch yourself and you go, am I really fucking sweaty? Yeah. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? When when I'm, like, doing my own songs and I'm like, playing festivals in Glaston, people go, oh, can you believe it? I'm like, yeah, I can, because I've worked like a fucking dog in these last four or five years to get here, because I knew that, as soon as I knew that this was a possibility, I work like a cunt to get here. But this Liverpool thing just happened overnight and it was fucking never an intention of mine to be doing that. I just used to play covers for the lads after the gig for 80 quid, you know, in my back bin. Do you know what I mean? And I'd go out that night and I'd spend that 80 quid. That'd be, that was what I'd done it for. It was for the now. Do you know what I mean? It was for a great laugh with the lads and a good buzz after the game. Do you know what I mean? I never took myself seriously. Fucking hell, I was, I'm singing nursery rhymes to pissed adults, basically. That's what I'm doing with the Liverpool stuff. Do you know what I mean? And like, I never took myself too seriously with it because, because why would you? Do you know what I mean? It was a laugh. It was so, but like, I, I still can't believe to this day where the fuck it's got me and what it's done for me, <laughs> do you know what I mean? And like the rooms it's put me and the people I've met. Do you know, it's fucking crazy. Like, the but, clock not see, come and see you in America? Yeah, that's what I mean. But Jürgen, again, he, he genuinely, like, it's weird. He likes me as a person, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like genuinely, if he come in here now, like, every time I see him and I stop and speak to him, I'm like, Jürgen, look, I'm sorry, lad. I don't want to bother you any longer. I'm, I'm going to leave you to it. And he's like, why, lad? I, I, I want to talk to you, you know. Come and sit here. It's not a blood. Fucking, where are you going? Do you know what I mean? And you're like, is he for fucking real? Him? And you're looking around at his coaching <laughs> staff, and they're like, he's just that. Uh, so he come to see me in um, in Michigan before he knew what I was. Basically, I've been flying around with the, the team in between like this tour. We started in Charlotte, then we went to New York, and then we went to Ann Arbor, Ann Arbor Michigan. It was just after uh, Kiev, so it was before Madrid and all that, and. Uh, like obviously everyone's there, the players are all there, everyone's in fucking club gear and I'm sat there in my tracky with my guitar, do you know, in like the, the in the lobbies and that and getting in the airports and fucking every time I'd walk past clubs, letting on to everyone, he just kept fucking looking at this guitar and looking back up at me as if to say like, what the fuck, what, what, we're a football club, what's this kid doing with the guitar? So eventually he asked someone and he was like, he asked Peter McDowell, you know, the person who does like the announcing on the, he, he leads the teams up before the game, he does the news on the telly and that. And I think he asked Peter and he said like, who's this fucking kid with the guitar and why is he here? So Peter's like, oh, he does this and, you know, he done a lay, a lay, a lay and, you know, blah, blah, blah. This is, you know, you might have said, like, oh, I've seen these videos, yeah. Well, I want to come and watch him while he's here just to get a feel for it. So like that video where he comes in to the bar and I'm like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Uh, I suppose I can ruin the surprise. Now that was actually acting. That was uh, that when I knew he was coming because the security team had to do a recce 
of the fucking room because it was just like a little, it was well smaller than this. It was a hotel bar that was just for the Michigan Supporters Club and they, Klopp was not supposed to be coming. It was just supposed to be me, Robbie Fowler and John Arnarisa. They were doing a bit of a talk. I'd play some songs and that was the end of it. 60 of them, intimate fucking gig. Now, thankfully, Klopp was doing a, an event upstairs in the hotel for sponsors, like a cocktail thing. And it finished just as like man was finishing. So the security had done a recce to check they could get him in and out. And he, Peter said to me, look, he got had to try to do something for the cameras here. He went, just say, oh my God, or something. I thought, fuck that, I'll look like, you know, one of some of that bad acting on Hollyoaks or something like that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I thought, uh, no, just put my hands on my head. Do you know what I mean? And he comes in and I just, I could just do that. Cause I'm thinking, but it was still just to see him in front of me. Do you know what I mean? And feel his presence. It was amazing. But we didn't have no much more contact than that until the next year. Obviously, I'd done Madrid. And then I was sat at the gate waiting to board the plane out to um, South Bend, Indiana. It was the first place we were going, Notre Dame University. It was the first stop on this next tour. And he's like, stood there and I'm standing where this, the camera is here. And he's like looking, looking at me. And he's like, does his little smile and you're like, I like cafe sort of thing. And he just gets up, um, starts walking around. I'm like, no way, he's coming up to me here. And he was just like, I've been looking at videos of you all fucking summer, lads. Do you know what I mean? And I was like, ah, what from, lad? You've been looking at me fucking Calvin Klein modelling and that, you know what I mean? He just started laughing, do you know what I just said? So, I don't think it was that, it was something like that, you know what I mean? Have you been looking at me modelling or something? You know what I mean? Or me, not me bodybuilding videos, I said to him, something like that. And he just started laughing. He went, ah, oh, fucking, you know, incredible lad in Madrid, blah, blah, blah. You know what I mean? I fucking can't get enough of it. And I was just like, ah, oh, boss. I was like, oh, yeah, it was great. So I just said to him, I was your summer lad. And I think he was a bit like, what? You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> what? Well, because like, people, obviously, people flap when they see him. And they're like, oh, yeah, again, what did you say to the lads at Barcelona? Do you know what I mean? What did you do this? What did you do that? And he's fucking not interested in that. You know yeah. what I mean? And he was just a bit like, it's right, lads. He went, <laughs> I went to Vegas, you know. And I went, oh, Vegas, I'd just been on a stag. I was like, Vegas is a belter, lads. Where'd you stay, lads? And just talking to him about Vegas. And he was like, stayed in the wind. Great, this, that, the other. And he was, and I remember him saying to me, this is what I thought, I'm going to get on with you. He was like, Vegas, he was like, the weather, incredible. Food, incredible. Shows, incredible. He went, and nobody in Vegas knows or gives a fuck who the fuck I am, do you know what I mean? And I was just <laughs> like, it's right, lad. He was like, I had a boss time, family holiday. No one bothered me. It was great. Done this show, you'd have loved it. Beatles show. He's talking to me about the Beatles now, and I'm like, fucking hell, do you know what I mean? Like, and he's just like, I'm like, I'm made up. You'd have to go to some lad, do you know what I mean? He was like, how was yours? You know, I was like, I've been to Spain with me, missus, blah, blah, blah. He's talking to me about his dog and then, Every time I'd see him on tour, he'd just be like, do you know what I mean? I'd be like, a bit weird this year, like, like, do you know what I mean? Like, why is he, what, just fucking, you know, Robbie Fowler stood there, Van Dyke stood, you know what I mean? What's he doing? And then, like, the end of the tour, this lad, Ricky, who's like the head camera lad, boss lad, proper scouser, living the dream, like, obviously, like, you know, he works with the players every fucking day. He's all, them, all that footage of them in the dressing room, having fucking parties after the cup wins. Ricky's filming that and he's just a scouser from Bootle who's a Liverpool fan, do you know what I mean? Jürgen loves him, do you know what I mean? Boss mates and shit like that. And uh, so Ricky's been trying to get me out on the ale all tour. You know, come on lad, have a bevy, have a bevy, have a bevy. So the last gig was in New York at this tour and uh, I played in Carragher's bar and I was like, lad, I am shattered, mate. I said, I'm going to bed, I can't even stand up. I'm not, he was like, come to East Village, lad, blah, blah. I was like, nah, lad, I'm not going for some fancy fucking club in New York. Like, it's not me. I don't fuck. I don't want an ending night like that. I've got the game tomorrow and that. I don't, you know, I'm here for the club. I don't really want to be rough or late or anything, you know what I mean? Fucking, I want to come back and do this again, sort of thing. Go on, go on, Sand, I'll leave you. So then, about 10 minutes later, my phone rings and he goes, Lad, you need to you need to come to this bar. You need to come to this bar. We're not going to East Village, though. We're trying to call him from the hotel. I can't tell you why, but you need to come. I was like, fuck off, Ricky. He's just trying to get me on the air, lad. I've told you. Do you know what I mean? I wasn't born yesterday, lad. I'm not coming. Do you know what I mean? He's like, lad, you need to come. And I'm like, why do I need to come, lad? Tell me why. He's like, lad, I can't tell you. I can't ruin it for you. And I'm like, ruin what, lad? What, what, you know what I mean? What have you got waiting for me there, lad? Is Bob Dylan there? And he was like, better, lad. And I was like, lad, come on, mate. He was like, you're going to have to tell me. He's like, oh, or I'm not coming. 
I was like, for fuck's sake, like, all right, lad. The gaffer's had a night, the gaffer's on a night out, so he's, we just got the nod off the head of travel to come. And as soon as I've walked in, he's called me over and he just said, where the fuck's Jamie? Get Jamie here now. I went, lad, he gets one night off on the old fucking tour. What does he want with me, lad? Stop lying to me. He said, I'm quite annoyed that you're playing on my arts, things like this, because you know how much I fucking love him. He was like, lads, I'm not lying to you. He's coming. I was like, bollocks. You know what I mean? I was having none of it. He just goes, for fuck's sake. Yeah, and he doesn't believe me. And I just did, what? <laughs> Tell him to get the fuck down here now. And I was just like, go ahead, lad, I'm on my way. Do you know what I mean? Walks in the bar and he's like, here he is, here he is, here he is. <laughs> fucking gets all his fucking coaching stuff. Give me this round. I was like, stop this now, right now. Do you know what I mean? If anything, it's the other way around. Fucking, you know what I mean? Nice to meet you. And he was just like, sit down, lad, have a bevy. Went out, had a bifter with him and all that. It was fucking great. Mm. He was just, and, and you know what? He, he was just like, he was talking to me like, like I was his son or something, you know what I mean? And he was just like, oh, I fucking love what you're doing. And like, he just had so much time for me. And what did he say to me? He went, tell me you fucking cried after that gig in Madrid. Tell me you cried. And I was like, oh, do, 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 I don't want to play cool. Or I was just I can't lie to him. You know what I mean? It's like lying to fucking God or something, even though I'm not religious. <laughs> do you know what I mean? He'll know. Do you know what I mean? And I'll go to a bad place if I lie to him. So I was like, look, lad, yeah, I wrapped myself in the drape on a vest. I'll cry. He went, I'm fucking so happy he said that. He said, because two days after the fucking final, once all the parade was done, my wife made a big bowl of pasta and we sat on the the house on the couch as a family we put youtube on we made a twitter account we made a facebook account and all that and we watched everything from the fans we watched all the fans footage and i watched your set and he said and when you were singing a lay a lay a lay at the end you were getting emotional um when it finished i burst out crying on my couch it was like i was in tears and my family hugging me we were all crying and i was crying watching you so i made up he was like I made up, you, talk, you you know what I mean? You cried as well because I would have felt soft. I went, fucking hell. But I thought it was going to be soft telling you that I cried. So we laughed and all that. And he was just like, look, Jamie, him and Pep Linders were just like, lads, what you're doing is fucking brilliant. Do you know what I mean? Like the way you brought the fans and, and, and the players and the team closer together, it's fucking incredible. You've really helped bridge this gap. And we really felt very distant from the fans. And I can honestly tell you, I don't feel so distant no more. And look, we need to keep on the way we're going because if we do, it's not a guaranteed recipe for success, but there's a hell of a lot more of a chance that we'll get be successful if we carry on moving together in the same way. You know, keep doing all this, you know, getting youngsters involved in singing the songs. The atmosphere is translating on the pitch, the players. It's like, honestly, you really are. And I was like, fucking hell, mate. It was like, you can't, mate. You know, he was like, thank you. And I was like, lad, you've just won me the European Cup. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? The other way around, lad, look. I'm a Liverpool fan. This all happened by accident, sort of thing, you know what I mean? And yeah, of course, I'll still fucking do it, you know what I mean? And his boss just had a boss night with him, you know, it felt really, you know, he knows how to, you know, you can tell he's a man manager. You know, he knows the players want to fucking run through walls for him because he makes them feel appreciated. He makes them feel, I've seen him with the players. I've, mm. you know, first hand behind closed doors, no cameras. I've seen what a man he is. I've seen like how he goes. Even the younger players who you know have got no chance of ever kicking a ball for Liverpool. He doesn't make them feel like that when 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 they're on pre-season tour with them, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. He's got his arm around them, he's having a laugh with them, he's fucking taking the passports out of the back pocket and slapping them on the head with it and that, you know what I mean? He's just like a like a, a father guy. figure, do you know what I mean? And like the funniest thing after all this was we'd done a fucking I'd done like a corporate event for for the main sponsors of Liverpool. It was all the CEOs or like all the big standard charters and all that. All the big companies come to Anfield to do it every year. And like the club put on this big dinner for them in one of the suites at Anfield, and like very, very not my world. Do you know what I mean? And like it was, it was. They're always the hardest gigs to do them. You know what I mean? Because the people aren't really asked about what they're just money men. You know what I mean? And they're there, but you know what the basic what I was there to do was I had to sing a couple of songs, of course, and then each table had like a player's name. So there was an Oxley Chamberlain table, there was a Milner table, there was a Salah table, and. All the people on the table had to make up a song about their player. Do you know what I mean? And I had to help them with it. It was fucking dead cringy, dead, you know what I mean? Corny corporate shit. But you know what? They had a laugh with it. And some of the songs were fucking, you know what I mean? Whatever they were. But it was just a part of like getting everyone talking to each other and that networking thing. But they had a special guest speaker. And they all thought it was like fucking van. They were, I knew it was Klopp. 
And they were all saying, I've heard it's Van Dyke, I've heard it's Milner, I've heard it's Lovren, I've heard it, or whoever it was at the time. I knew it was Klopp, and obviously, fucking Colin Murray. Do you know Colin Murray? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's doing the, he's the one hosting, hosting it. So he's like, I'd like to introduce now me, and I know Colin from Madrid, and that he, he was on the stage. And he's like, I'd like to introduce now the special guest, Jürgen Klopp. Everyone's fucking gobsmacked, do you know what I mean? Klopp walks in through the back doors. And obviously, he met all these people before. These are the people who are putting money into the Bank of Liverpool, do you know what I mean? And he's walking around like you could tell. He's like, yeah, you know what I mean? And he's waving, doing like the little queen wave and that. And he's like, yeah, yeah. And he just looks, points at me, goes, what the fuck are you doing in here? Do you know what I mean? <laughs> and he just comes over, makes yeah. a beeline, off his roots, just goes, <laughs> right, lads, do you know what I mean? He's like, take everything you can get, mm -hmm. Jay. And just walks away, yeah. like as if to say, I'm made up, you're getting a fucking bevy for this, do you mm -hmm. know what I mean? And then all his speech, he keeps bringing me into all his head, Jamie, man. Oh, my fuck, do, do you know what I mean? Why me, do you know what I mean? But, like, I, I genuinely don't get it. Do you know what I mean? He, he, like, I can honestly say confidently that he likes me. Do you know what I mean? And it's an amazing feeling. But even this time, the last pre-season tour we just done in July, went to Singapore and all that, ends up on the plane having a drink with a couple of the players and that, you know, surreal, like, fucking fucking like party in the sky sort of thing no one's pissed do you know what I mean everyone's just having a couple of bevies but Van Dyke's got weekends in paradise on the speaker do you know what I mean come through here lad do you know what I mean it was fucking amazingly all the play Henderson fucking unbelievable fella mm -hmm. top captain didn't weren't drinking because he doesn't drink but like proper took me in made me feel dead welcome on the plane and that and like just like proper captain do you know what I mean mm -hmm. and like it was amazing it was who's, amazing who's your favourite Liverpool player Probably Henderson since. Has it, yeah? Yeah, since like he, as he a was player. Flying, man. As a player, it was Robbo. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Robbo was my number one because it's just like that story. Do you know what I mean? Of like being what he was working, he was like part time football. Queen's and, Park, yeah, yeah, Queen's Park. And then, you know, like, and, and the way he plays, you know what I mean? It's just passion. It's like the way I play music. Do you know mm -hmm. what I mean? It's just full throttle, passion, mm -hmm. energy, grit, determination. Do you know what I mean? Spirit. Do you know what I mean? And and every scouser resonates with the way that Robbo plays footy. Do you know what I mean? He's just a fucking tough cunt. You just see yourself in him. Do you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Obviously, but I think your character, man, as well. That you're so well liked, even though sometimes you maybe see comments of this, but you're loved all around the country, yeah, all lucky. around the world. Now, I'm lucky, man, I'm lucky like, with it. You know what you're I mean? Up, like, you don't sit with a high these high caliber guys and they're walking across the room wanting to high five you, that tells you you about your character. Obviously the self-doubt can creep in sometimes and you think, oh, am I doing good enough? Am I good enough? But yeah. clearly what you're doing is fucking working. What you're doing, you're only thriving, you're only wanting to get better, you only want to leave a blueprint for other young kids in Liverpool. This yeah. is how you do it. Like, to sit, share a room with these people and shouting you in, a lot of these people don't give anybody the time of day because no. they can't be fucking asked. No, and, and you know, you don't have a lot of common with them, you know, uh, yeah. uh, you know obviously, because it's such a different life, isn't it? But no, Rob, I was, was is, is, you know, is the one who I'd always be like, yeah, he's me man, you know what I mean? But obviously, Harvey Elliott's quite quite a chatty lad to me, you know what I mean? And I was, you know, his dad and that, you know what I mean? He's got a younger brother who likes to come to the boss night gigs and stuff mm. like that and the boss kids. So yeah. we always, you know, sort them out and that. And, uh, yeah, just but Jordan, just like I could never that the way he took me in. Alison as well, like you know, I've had a few interviews with him and played guitar with him, but Jordan on the plane, just like I could never, I'll never ever forget it. Do you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. and like he got his phone up and he was like, he was like, Who'd you listen to? Do you know what I mean? So I started to like ask me about me and that. I was like, I told him, and I'm like, Who'd you listen to? So he gets his phone up, you know what I mean? And he's showing me like his is downloaded library we get buys in there the album downloaded i'm like you've just fucking done that he's like, <laughs> he's like lads i've got no yeah. mom, airplane mode i've got no wi-fi i've got no signal that's that's on me and just like he was great do you know what i mean he was a proper captain do you know what i mean like and obviously he's, he's, he's lifted everything that he can lift with liverpool do you know what i mean which is more than any other captain's ever done do you know what i mean so mm. there's, there's that to, to say for him as well as well as being a top footballer and a top professional but you know as a human being and like as a captain like he's just a he's just a role model do you know what i mean for for any young player in the game really and you know um he's such a lovely fella family man do you know what i mean and just had got nothing but time for him do you know what i mean and like even now you know like played a couple of games this season and like you know come under a bit of criticism from you know even friends of mine do you know what I mean and like I didn't see it you know what I mean I think people just expect different things from different people do you know what I mean but for me he played he had a thing he played Ajax at home and he was fucking outstanding 
and I just sent him a little message you know, on Instagram and it's just like I'd well played today's Kip you were fucking great there do you know what I mean messages back oh, thanks very much mate means a lot you know what I mean just little things like that and you just think didn't need to there he's just fucking ran his ass off yeah. he's got home to his family he's got fucking hundreds of thousands of messages coming in from fucking Liverpool fans but you know he took the time to message me back within five minutes and it's just like not that he has to do you know what I mean because I you know he's a busy man but just that just from that on the plane and even you know what I don't know if it was me me or one of the media lads or Rob or someone spilled a, someone smashed the glass on the plane and the flight attendant come and was like oh I'll sort it and Jordan's like nah nah I'll sort this just got on his hands and knees you know what I mean cleaning the glass up do you know what I mean that's the Liverpool captain there do you know what I mean like lead by example man and even like I just remember looking at him thinking you know what, lads? Fucking respect. Good man. on you, lads. Do you know what I mean? Because by all means, do you know what I mean? You get cunts clapping well, their fingers. Well, and I, that. I, I think, I think most people, if you fucking smash a glass in a restaurant or on a plane, I think nature is to let someone who works there clean it up because in, in your head you think, oh, that's the job. Do you know what I mean? And like, you know, you're not being disrespectful by doing it. A lot of the times they insist. Do you know what I mean? But to see him do that on a plane, you know, you know. Obviously, he's a business class fucking client. Do you know what I mean? And like, the, obviously, the the air out is just like, oh, sir, sir, let me do it. And it's just like, it's all right. <laughs> I sort it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Cleans it all up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Don't want anyone. Don't want you walking on that. You know what I mean? It's just like you just you just like I always had a, a good opinion of him anyway, but that just amplified it. You know what I mean? Because he didn't need to. Yeah. He didn't need to. He could have stayed in his first class suite upstairs. But he come down to have a look at what all the you know mixing. Not just me, but the other staff who work for the club as well. And yeah, it was great. And the, these are the things I've had the joy of seeing. But you know what? Even Everton players. I remember going to Qatar um, when Liverpool played there, and I was a guest of like the Supreme Committee or something mad like that. We we're even a guest of Liverpool, and I got put to this like we got talked to this dinner. It's like John Barnes, Cafu. Fucking Pochettino, Ruby Costa, I think. All mad players, Tim Cale, pop stars. Oh, like, honestly, and me at this table. This was like in 2019 still, do you know what I mean? Weekend of Paradise has only mm. just come out. And like, I, I was thinking, what the fuck am I doing at this table? I had the shits as well, because I've been in Qatar. <laughs> so all this posh food, you know, proper top Qatari restaurant type of thing. And I'm sat there at the end of the table eating bread. Do you know what I mean? And like... I can just, just like nodding to John Barnes for a bit of comfort because I'd met him before. And after it, Tim Cale came over and was like, All right, mate, it's Jamie, what's happening, lad? I was like, How the fuck do you know who I am? He's like, Lad, obviously, I'm an Everton fan. I hate your videos, but I think what you're doing, <laughs> but I think what you're doing is great. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? He was like, If you know, I think it's boss what you're doing, and I'm made up that you've got to go and do this, and you don't see it. Do it. It's, a, it's an amazing thing, you know. I just wish they were Everton songs, sort of thing, you know, laughing. And I was like, Fucking hell, he's right, lad. You know, you, again, you didn't have to come over and do that. And again, I, I thought to myself, obviously I've loaded me mates of mess ex Liverpool players through me, but me two Everton mates, you know, you know, like obviously they don't want fuck all to do with any of that. So I was like, Tim, I'm sorry to do this because I really do hate to do this, but lads, you are the best player any of my Evertonian mates has ever seen because the rest of them are fucking being proper shite. Do you know what I mean? I was like, you are, the, the, you know, of my generation Evertonian team, you are the man. And I don't think any other Ever Everton fan would disagree with me. Do you know what I mean? If you're an Everton fan out there and you're talking Tim Cale, do you know what I mean? He was your man. He was Tim Cale, Baines and Pina. They were the boys from, from the, the area, the period of, of that time. Do you know what I mean? Coleman or whatever. But so... I said, look, can you do a video to the lads? He was like, yeah, of course, lads, you know what I mean? He'd done a video. And I was like, I can't believe I've got this Everton bastard talking on, on my phone for you here. He was like, you know, having a laugh at me, take no fucking notice of him, lads. He fucking loves the toffees and all that, you know what I mean? He was great. Mm -hmm. And like, you know, you realize, it's only then you realise that you do see them as like human beings as well. Yeah. And you think, oh, fucking hell, he had that sound. And mm -hmm. probably f fucked him off loads of times as he was in his car as an Everton player in the city as a little kid and that, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? But yeah. It's a nice fella and it's mad. And that's like, that's the Liverpool side of things where I say, you know what I'm saying at the start, I've been in some fucking mad places yeah. with it. And that's the shoulders you're rubbing with. Like, it's unbelievable to see just a kid who's playing covers to then travelling the world, mixing it with the biggest and the best. What's the plans for the future, Jamie Boy? Like, where do you see yourself? you just got to keep going, haven't you? I don't, I'd hate to put a, you know, put expectations out there for me and say, I'm going to be here by this time because 
the music industry is a tough industry to crack and you know life's just you know it's not always doesn't always go to plan does it you know what I mean but for me I would just fucking love to to keep doing what I'm doing for as long as possible do you know what I mean and if I can move up the stages move to the bigger venues if I could get a bit of fucking radio play it's not gonna it's not gonna make me dick any bigger do you know what I mean but you know if I, if I could make the connection I'm making with people now on a larger scale if I can bring about some positive change if I can fucking not brainwash but if I can open people's minds to a different way of thinking do you know what I mean like some people may not realise do you know what I mean the politics that I speak in applies to them a lot of people don't you know what I mean and you know even like like they could make even just making people realise that they can make a change to their own life as well as other people's do you know what I mean I think that's the biggest one that you can change your own life however way you want to change it if I can bring that sort of realisation to people in any way do you know what I mean and I feel like I've done a good thing do you know what I mean yeah. but that's not why I'm doing it I do it because I love it and because I'm passionate about my messages and I want to get them out there and, yeah. and look fucking hell I used to get up every morning and load my tools into my car six o'clock in the morning and go and work on a fucking freezing cold site all day and now I get up in the morning and I come and speak to people like you I come and you know I sit there with the guitar on me knee do you know what I mean like that's I'm living my fucking dream at the end of the day. Do you know what I mean? It's I want to continue to do it as possible. I'm not saying it's easy every day because it's not, as I've touched on. Do you know what I mean? But you know, you're asking me if I, you know, do you like doing what you do? I'd say yeah, I fucking love it. Yeah. You know what I mean? And like this, this, this is uh, I do the, I do this for the hunger of it and and, like, and to get up in the morning and to enjoy what you do and to enjoy the hustle and bustle. I love the business. I love the fucking crack. I love the crowds. I love my fans and. Yeah. Yeah, I just want to just want to keep doing it. There's no no reason why I should stop anytime soon. Like yourself, James, I'd like to make a bigger impact in America. Do you know what I mean? I'd like to get over there one day. That's gonna be the hardest cookie of all, especially because at the minute my music is so UK politically driven. Yeah. It might not make a connection with as many Americans at this moment in time, but. You know, I'd like to get into Europe a bit more. I'd like to get into. Yeah, I want to take over, take over the world. I want to see the world. I want to go and do it all. You know, looking at Paddy now. Do you know what I mean? There's the inspiration. Do you know what I mean? He's doing it. Man. He's doing You're it. He's doing it. But yeah, I know. I know. Doing it. But I'm doing it on Paddy's doing it on the level at which do you know. There's yeah. it's a fucking global, worldwide, fucking mm -hmm. top top level. Do you know what I mean? And I think I can get there. Do you know what I mean? I might like to have that chat with Jerry Cinnamon one day as well. Do you know what yeah, I mean? Just I <laughs> hopefully, just you know. Let them know that I weren't ripping them off. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah, a big fan. Well, fucking, if I think if you were to probably compare bank balances, you'd, you'd say I haven't ripped anyone off. Do you know what I mean? But, um, yeah, like, I just, you know, just be myself and, you know, to make the connection that I've made with people now more and with more people on a bigger yeah. scale you know I've done the batters twice over I want to do the fucking hydro one day do you know oh. what I mean in Glasgow I've done the arena I've got the peer head shows to do I want to do a fucking you know I want to do a park show I want to fucking do you know what I mean headline Glastonbury yeah you know I want to play the well, headline in Glastonbury again it's something you'd love to do but you know the pyramid that's something that might be hard do you know what I mean given where I am and the age I'm at now but it's only just beginning. No, no, but the pyramid stage, do you know what I mean? A set on a pyramid stage, that's the epitome for me. Do you know, fucking headliner festival, do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Might not be Glastonbury, you know what I mean? Because you've got McCartney and Elton John and people like that, you know what I mean? Maybe when I'm 80. But, uh, like, you know, just just get out there, man, and see the world and, you know, maybe even learn, a few, learn more about myself, learn more about other people, learn more about the world, learn more about music, make more music, fucking have a number one album do you know what I mean I want to do it all but you know if it all stopped tomorrow the journey I've been on I'd be fucking so happy with what I've done so proud and like you know just like I'd just like to first and foremost thank all the people who, who've who've put me here because you know I wouldn't be doing this without you know I've mentioned my mum and dad and my girlfriend and my fiance rather than their support but like you know, the support of people who don't know me from fucking diddly, do you know what I mean? Who, who've bought into to what I do, who support you know like all the Liverpool fans from the start, spreading to all the people you know who've managed to look past the Liverpool thing and get behind me on music. Anyone who's bought a ticket to the gig, anyone who's listened to a podcast, anyone who's listened to a song, bought an album, bought a bit of merch. I just like to thank you all because fucking mm -hmm. you're the ones who are making me live my dream. Because a singer without 
a crowd without his fans, without listeners, it's it's pointless. It doesn't yeah. work. Do you know what I mean? And thankfully, you know, you have all gone into me tunes and gone into me as a person. And yeah. hopefully, you know, you shall continue to do it. For me, just you sitting here today and meeting you, this is only the beginning for you to where you're going to take things and the where you want to be. Like everything you've achieved, obviously, there's self doubt always going to be there. But just look what you're doing now that you've already chosen that path and it's already leading to everything that you've ever set out to do so that just shows you your character you don't everything's levels and 2023 is just going to be another big fucking level for you like for anybody that's watching because i know you've been open about your mental health now for anybody that's watching that's maybe in the struggle what advice would you have for them jamie talk talk that's it honestly like and it's it's cliche and it's the main it's the first thing that everyone says but it really does problem shared is a problem half in my opinion you know what i mean like you've half the burden with someone else and like you don't have to talk to you know it always helps if you can talk to people that you know and you trust you know your friends your family Obviously, some people don't have that luxury, but, you know, it could be a fucking neighbour, it could be a fellow you see every day on the bus, it could be someone in the fucking local coffee shop or your local fucking cafe, do you know what I mean? You just need to talk to someone because you think people don't care and people don't listen, but people care more than you'll ever fucking know. And, like, the biggest strangers can become your best friends, do you know what I mean, in this world? And that's, that, that's the, the, you know, if you're worried about, you know, professional help is always the way to go. Not always people can afford it. Not always people know where to find it. Do you know what I mean? But you go and speak to your doctor, he'll be able to sort you out. Know, you know, it might not come as quickly as it would if it was private and it might not be as great as it would be private, but it is there. And, you know, if you feel like you're being abandoned by systems that are supposed to give you help and guidance, do you know what I mean? talk about it you know what i mean that's when you especially you've got to go to a friend you've got to go to a family you've got to go to a, you know someone you've got to tell them that you're not right and the other side of it is as well as talking is just knowing that it's okay to not feel okay it's okay to feel lost it's okay to not feel yourself because we we all fuck don't care who you are or what you do or where you come from you might not think that you've been through some sort of mental health struggle but you fucking have do you know what i mean and like especially now in the world that we're living in today it's so much harder stop paying attention to social media stop paying attention to whatever you the cunt got you know what i mean like we're all different you know what i mean we've all got different paths to walk and different streets to walk up and down and it's recognizing what your street is and you know finding what your street is do you know what i mean you might not know do you know what i mean but just talk man that's the most important thing because you'll find out answers in asking the questions anyway do you know what i mean and in talking about your feelings you'll sort of summarize as to why you're feeling about that but yeah i just say you're not alone do you know what i mean that's the you know the, the biggest thing with mental health is feeling alone but you're not do you know what i mean because fucking hell hopefully this podcast has made you feel a little bit less alone do you know what i mean but there's honestly the world's a very compassionate place if if you know what i mean if you trust the right people and you and you find you know the right you know the right people and again like i said you might think people don't care or you might think no one's asked or pe people wouldn't miss you do you know what i mean and that's the big thing as well but they would they really fucking would and your being here makes so much of an impact on people's lives in a positive way that you wouldn't even realize until you were gone do you know what i mean and or until someone fucking told you or until you told someone that you were suicidal or you you know you didn't want to be here anymore they tell you just how much they fucking need you here and how much they want you here and yeah and that, again it all comes through opening that mouth of yours do you know what i mean or sending a text and also it happens on the flip side as well if you fucking know someone and you think they're not quite themselves do you know what i mean or they all right they're a bit quieter you don't see themselves don't just say ah oh, they'll be all right do you know what i mean they're just fucking tired or whatever all you've got to ask is are you all right lad you sure, yeah? You know, you can tell me, you know, if, if something's not all right. And sometimes that's all they need to break down and go, fucking hell, this has been happening, that's been happening, you know what I mean? They need to know someone cares about them and that happens by caring about someone, by just yeah. knocking on. Even if it's fucking Gladys next door, you know what I mean? You haven't seen her for a couple of weeks, she lives on her own. Just give her a knock on the door, man. Just ask her if she's all right. Does she need any fucking shopping in? Do you know what I mean? That can spark the conversation that needs to be had. And it's so fucking important. Because look, this is what I always say. See them cunts up there in fucking Downing Street in the fucking Houses of Commons. They're not going to help you. Do you know what I mean? They don't give a fuck about you, your kids, your parents, or what you do for a living. But fucking see us, see people in the community 
we fucking do. Do you know what I mean? And that's what you need to realise. So go and, go and find them people, go and find the people who are there for you. And I guarantee you, you know, if that's today and you go and find them people tomorrow, you'll feel like there's much less of a problem. Jamie Boy, thanks, thanks so much, for coming James. on today and telling thanks your so story. I thoroughly enjoyed that. You're doing amazing, mate. I look forward to seeing what you do for the fucking future. 2023, it's going to be even bigger and better. Cheers, brother. Both of us. God bless you, bro. And you, Thank mate. You.